scorching day in Lubbock, Texas. The Red Raiders make their way onto the field at Jones AT&T Stadium and Hook'em, led by Tom Herman, brings out the horns. Surprise, surprise, the Big 12 is underway on Fox today. We welcome you to our second game. Tim Brando by my side, Spencer Tillman. Spencer, we're going to see one of the prize catches at quarterback in college football today in Sam Ellinger. Well, he is perfect for this power spread concept, Tim, which is basically Urban Meyer's offensive scheme. He's got some new wrinkles, though. Mike Yorsich, his new offensive coordinator, going to bring in some 12 personnel, perhaps two tight ends in the back. That's going to make him even more efficient. He's going to be outstanding. Trevor Lawrence's numbers are high, but over the last two years, the numbers bear it out. He's as productive, none better. And for Texas Tech, if they can keep Bowman upright, yes. which has been a problem for Allen in his career here, they've got a, a real chance in this game. Well, you remember last year, I guess it was week three, when he went out with the shoulder injury that you're referencing, Tim. He was leading the conference in scoring in terms of pass production. So he's capable of running this offense. A couple of weeks ago, he got his fourth 400-plus yard passing performance. He's outstanding, and I got the impression i know i think you did too as we talked about it after the interview this guy has a certain aura and confidence about him that he's ready just to take the next step 93 degrees it's scorching and the uh the winds are mild and by lubbock standards really mild tech won the toss deferred so texas will receive trey wolf will be kicking it away for the red raiders and texas will counter back deep with deshaun jameson in single safety back at the goal line. Texas Tech coming off a win a couple of weeks back against Houston Baptist. Texas a big win at home against UTEP and it's through the end zone for a touchback and they'll open at the 25. And as for Sam Ellinger, we've touched on it many times. Born and bred to be a Longhorn and he picked up in his opener where he left off. Tim, he's outstanding. He's got the intermediate game down. His leadership is off the charts. But now you're going to see him over the last couple of years being able to go to those tall targets that are not longer there. His game is going to be adjusted, but hey, don't worry about it. He's got a three-headed monster in terms of running back that's going to be able to take some of that pressure off of him. Offensive coordinator Mike Yurcich is going to add a little bit of what he's learned under one of the great schemers of the game and Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State to bring in some 12 personnel. That's two tight ends and one back. We'll see if that helps his overall production. That one back is Keontae Graham to open on first and ten. Quick drop out of the gun, and he'll decide to tuck it, take himself out of bounds, up around the 30 as you look at this Texas offense. And up front, the left tackle, Sam Cosme, he's actually caught a touchdown pass uh, for Texas in his past. And uh, Brendan Schooler, the transfer, will be going up against his brother, Colin Schooler, who's playing linebacker at Texas Tech. Here goes Keontae Ingram ahead for a first down out to near midfield. The rest of this Texas Tech perimeter will be under a lot of pressure along with Colin Schooler in trying to defend this Texas attack, which has got a lot of weaponry, particularly at wide receiver this year. Ingram again burrows ahead to about the 47-yard line. They marked it at the 45. So a couple of carries, the first for 12 yards. Interesting, Tim, though, Mike Yurcich, the offensive coordinator for Texas, going with pace and tempo as a tactical advantage. I think eventually we're going to see them slow things down. Little quick wide receiver screen, and it's out to Brennan Eagles, number 13. He's got a first down, move the chains. As you look at the Texas Tech defense, up front they'll go with a three-man line. Tony Bradford, keep an eye on him. This is a linebacker-heavy core. Jeffers taking over for Jordan Brooks. Keep an eye on him. And Seth Collins, a converted wide receiver, has moved into the secondary. A bit of a surprise. And Ingram is stopped at the point of attack this time on first down. He may have, well, they're going to give him the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Well, Keontae Ingram is one of those three-headed running backs that we talk about. Roshan Johnson, another one that will be there. John Robinson, I think, is probably the most gifted and talented, an authentic five-star athlete. One of the best team they've had in the last decade, for sure. Roshan Johnson has come in, number two. And as you mentioned, uh, Kazan Robinson, the more talented, perhaps, of that trio. And we'll likely see quite a bit of him. On second and ten, Ellinger. Design run that time, popped hard by Thomas Leggett, number 16. That's the transfer from out of Allen Hancock College. 
Navarre, Florida. Leggett came down there with intention, man. He he knows that's his read on that isolation when they go with that intentional call run for the quarterback. Run support, that's his job. He's going to be sticking up number 16. You're going to see him often in this scheme. Well, for those of you in the state of Texas that were switched to our game, Kansas State just got an interception of a Spencer Rattler pass, and they are putting away wow. the upset of the day as we speak in college football. The Sooners going down on the slant. Joshua Moore, number six, has it to the 30-yard line. It's a first down. He's the Z receiver out there. You're going to watch Josh come in. Nice little job of stutter stepping. And again, when you present your numbers to the quarterback, this is one of the things that Elliger excels at, putting it on the numbers on those intermediate routes. Trips to the bottom of your screen. And again, they go with the wide receiver screen to Schooler. And Brendan Schooler scotches to near the 20-yard line, close to the first down. Rico Jeffers with the tackle. Nice job of making Jacob Morgan Stern, number 41, that spur linebacker playing on the inside and middle of this Texas Tech defense, making him miss, get an additional yardage after that. Outstanding. I think there's some happiness in Texas with that last score. I just oh, you better believe it. <laughs> they go to Schooler the other way, and he's got another first down, and inside the 15, bumped out at the 12. Talk about immediate impact. What a narrative for him and his brother, man. Just a tremendous job of them navigating their way back here within the last calendar month, finding a new home. And they're making a big impact in their respective programs. I'll get a reminder, Kansas State has upended Oklahoma in a big upset, 38-35. rest of the country will be joining us shortly. For those of you here in Texas, I know you're all smiles, whether you're a Tech fan or a Texas fan. That's Jalen Hutchins yeah. on the stop of Ingram that time. Yeah, you're going to see Jalen Hudson's actually playing more of a, in the three-man front, a true nose tackle. He's going to be responsible for either gap to the left or the right of him. Nice job of shedding and getting in there, getting his big 300-pound frame in there, the red shirt sophomore. So second down and seven, the ball at the nine. They can't get a first down without benefit of a touchdown. Kate Brewer, the tight end. Uh -oh. Cutting back the other way is Ingram. That was well read by Krishan Merriweather. This kid is special. By way of Garden City Community College in the state of Kansas, they're expecting big things from him. He had 12 tackles in the opener against Houston Baptist. Yeah, no question Merriweather is going to be a factor, but I tell you, Thomas Leggett, number 16, that safety, he's been involved in two of the last three plays, coming from that high safety position. Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, has given him the assignment to take care of that quarterback. That's the number that they can't account for. It's his responsibility to deal with Sam Elegant. Keep an eye on the tight end down here. Ellinger with time, flushed from the pocket, has some space, decides to run, and gets it down to the five, maybe the four, but not enough for the first down. That's Brandon Boyer Randall, number two with the tackle. Great job of pressure without actually all out blitzing. And again, back in coverage. That's the reason why Sam had to pull this thing down. Texas Tech doing an outstanding job overall, for the most part, sure handed and getting him down within three after the initial contact. Very well did the defense play. You like this call? They're going for it. I, I like the call, Tim, because they, nothing really has stopped him from getting down to this point. I see a soft spot on the left side of this formation. I think they'll be able to get the ball in. On fourth and uh, two, pre snap movement. The yep. They were looking for the encroachment and or offsides. I'm not sure they got it. Our referee today is Scott Campbell. It may be a false start. And Samuel Cosby was selling it. Yep. 52, the left tackle there, like he's thinking it's going to be on Texas Tech. You know, this great debate will be a determination. Angelau, 75, I think may be guilty of the pre-snap movement. And if that's the case, they'll have to settle for three. Here's the call. Offside, on 53, defense. Little bit causing the offense a lot of the false starts. Uh, Angelo did the defense job goal. on Eli Howard, 53. That's what happened. And that's a free set of downs now for Texas. Big call and a big moment. Yep, and you, you question whether or not it was the right decision. It's a move point now, but you can see the movement on that side. He just jumps. He gets his yeah. in the neutral zone and fraction. Yeah, he knew it, too. He got him. Yeah, he knew it. There's the uh, keep. Walking. It's Ellinger standing up with a touchdown. Critical call 
on that fourth and two play to give them the first down, and Ellinger takes advantage using his feet to get in for six. That inside zone, it reminds me so much of what Tim Tebow used to do. I mean, it's a call play. It's actually not zone, it's power. Power in the strictest sense of the definition with a lead runner in front of him. Just outnumbered if you're Texas Tech and then outmuscled. This Texas team is on average about 15 to 20 pounds bigger on that front offensive line. Cameron Dicker for the extra point. We'd like to welcome those of you that just joined us after the game between Oklahoma and Kansas State. 7 0 our score as Sam Ellinger takes his Longhorns 75 yards in the opening series. Spencer Tillman alongside. Already a pretty big surprise today that Gus and Joel had. This matchup should be a track meet. I think the exciting part is coming when we start to see Texas's defense. But right now, Mike Yurcich, the offensive coordinator for Texas, has some tools to work with. Maybe he keeps a little bit of it in his tool chest, yep. not have to expose it if they're able to move the ball down the field that effectively. Well, the Horns score with their opening series. We'll see what Texas Tech does. And we touched on Alan Bowman. When he's been healthy, he's been very effective. But they have not had him healthy for any of the Texas games. In fact, this will be his first start against the Longhorns. Well, when we talked to him, he was very much aware of that fact, and, and he was excited about the chance after two successive years of not being able to face the Longhorns, not being able to play. But as we talked about in the open, Tim, he has very much command of what they're doing offensively here. Looked at a couple of his games, including the performance a couple of weeks ago when he threw for over 400 yards. He knows what to do. He's got a lot of weapons to throw to, nine different receivers he was able to connect with. Uh, he's capable of running this scheme. Keyshawn Carter awaits the kick coming from Cameron Dicker. Texas already with a 7-0 lead. This one will go through the end zone for a touchback. The Red Raiders will start from their 25-yard line, and here comes Allen, the sophomore from Great Vine, Texas. Got a lot of freedom in this offense that is run by David Yost, who's worked with some of the best. His first career starts, but in those 11 career starts, he's been outstanding. Well, he's tall, he's strong, and he's confident. I think that's what you need to do when you're facing the team. We don't know a lot about this Texas defense against conference caliber competition, competition to be sure, we're gonna see in this first series. Urban Meyer said today on Big Newton kickoff, the top hire in the country was Chris Ash, his defensive coordinator. They've gone to a 4-2-5 defensive set. This pass is to Azukama, Eric Azukama. Deshaun Jamison in there on the tackle, the cornerback as well on the back end of that. I was kind of intrigued. You know, this offense is predicated on attacking the grass. If you see off coverage, that's where they're going with the ball immediately. Gain of nine, so second down and a yard to go. Those corners walked up now. Little screen out to look at that. That's Sir Roderick Thompson, and you can't say sir to him. He's got big time playmaking capability. Sophomore, 765 career yards for him. Look out for him today. Well, you better come with the balanced base underneath them. He's outstanding. They're going fast, but they'll get to him eventually. In the crease, they find their man, and that's Keyshawn Carter, 82. See, this is what Chris Ash, the defensive coordinator from Texas, was concerned about. If they get this new, newly installed defensive scheme and not able to communicate, that's when Texas Tech will flip the switch and begin to go pace and tempo and use it as a tactical advantage. You can already see Texas defenders walking back to the line of scrimmage. You look at that Texas Tech offense, and they've got... A lot of stout people up front, particularly Dawson Deaton, who calls the signals at the center position for Alan Bowman. But Sub Roderick Thompson, you've already seen him go to work. He is special. They have a quartet of backs that they'll use. This pass, a quick cross. It's Keyshawn Carter again, and the Red Raiders are in the red zone of Texas. Keyshawn Carter caught a touchdown pass on their first scoring opportunity last year in this matchup from the slot position. Once again, Pace and Temple serving the Red Raiders well. Thompson, the lone setback. Look at that little spin move. and negotiates for a couple of yards. Aiden Stearns, number seven, the veteran free safety, comes up to make the tackle. He's one of the real leaders of this team. Or Chris Ash. I tell you, we're going to see Sir Roderick in a lot of other positions, too, besides being in the backfield next to Bowman. But he is a threat. You talk about smoke through a keyhole. This kid right here is elusive. He's smart. He's intelligent. He's a keeper. Second down and eight. Plenty of time on that play clock. 
And they will allow him to make his own calls once we get deep into that play clock. On the crossing pattern, it is caught. <laughs> it is touchdown. Keyshawn Carter again, his third. This one for a touchdown. Well, last year, Timmy, they cleared it out from on a corner post route with a little, what we call a smash concept. This time, it's just a quick look in route from that slot position. Bowman gets it, his eyes on the mesh point comes out. He knows exactly where he goes with it and threads it between the coverage. I mean, you have three white jerseys between them, and that was on a rope. Outstanding. Well, you can understand why they're so high on Bowman here, and he's been around for quite some time. Look out for... Uh, all those stats that have belonged to many a Texas Tech starter since the days of the air raid first arriving here under the Pirate. Trey Wolf with the extra point. And here's a look at our progressive game flow. One of 75 yards for Texas. Sam Mellinger leading the way for Hook'em. But the Red Raiders counter with Bowman. Yeah, I'd say it's a track meet, wouldn't you? Fox College Football is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Deshaun Carter with a magnificent opportunity. A year ago at 150 yards in the matchup against Texas and he's the recipient of three passes, including the one for a touchdown to end that 73 yard drive where Bowman went five for five. He's such a big target again. He's able to get his body from that slot position presented in such a way where he, the quarterback can just put it on the numbers. He's so sure-handed, confident, able to read and react, throwing it where the grass is. That's an old tenet of this offensive scheme. Deshaun Jamison brings it from two yards deep in the goal. Look out. Beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. And Ram Power Players is brought to you by Ram Trucks. And these guys are built to serve. Well, it's a three-headed monster. Keontae Graham, Rashawn Johnson, of course, and John Robinson. All three of these guys are bring something unique to the table. But as I pointed out, I think Robinson probably is the most talented and gifted among those three. Mike Yurcich, the offensive coordinator, knows he's got an excellent competition context, and he's not going to give that youngster any more accolades than he deserves well, at this point. He's willing to say the ceiling may be higher, yeah, yeah. but not that he's the best of the triumvirate, and I get that. Yeah, I do. you got to manage him. But in reality, this is the first five-star that Texas has had at running back since Cedric Benson, and a lot of people are saying, well, we haven't been this pumped up since Ricky Williams joined us as a freshman. Here's Money, 83, Bad out order. of the slot. Kai Money reels in his first catch. Gain of five. It'll be second down and five with the ball resting at the Longhorn 47. Just wow. rushing three. Plenty of time. Pulls it down while he's flushed. Coming back for the ball, which is what you want to see. Brennan Eagles, number 13. They'll Mark his forward progress stopped at the 42-yard line of Texas Tech. And so here's the route here off, off coverage, what we call catch coverage on the back end. And when you have this kind of coverage scheme, the ball will travel faster than the body, Tim. You've got to close that gap in a hurry. Well, Sean Johnson right up the gap, spilled. As he goes end over end after the tackle by Thomas Leggett. Got a down red Raider down here. Yeah, maybe Leggett who hit him. Well, we'll see. No, it was not. It was... One of the interior linemen, Nick, Nick McCann, McCann, 98. Senior out of Texarkana. Just about a mile from Louisiana. Do you remember that I old like song? That. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Very good. <laughs> We're tied at seven. The horns have it when we return. Fox College Football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Along with Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando, Nick McCann made it back under most of his own power. Good news for Texas Tech. Jalen Hutchings, the normal starter, is back in at that spot. That's just offset the nose position. You need as much depth on a warm day as, as this through the course of the game. Roshad Johnson in the backfield on second and three for the Horns. Staying with that three-man front. Roshad. 
Burrows ahead to the 30-yard line. First down for him. Tom Herman in his fourth season, seventh overall. I think a lot of people would suggest that it's his time to bring a championship. It's been more than a decade since Texas has had one in this conference. As ahead, Roshan Johnson goes to the 25-yard line. But this is not any typical year for any head coach. College Schooler making the tackle. The brother of Brendan Schooler for Texas Tech. Wearing number 17. I can tell you so far, there's been a couple of good moves in this uncertain season, but Tom Herman, by far and away, in my opinion, made one of the most profound statements of his team, perhaps as the game goes through. Nothing doing for Johnson this time at the line of scrimmage. Rico Jeffers comes up and runs support. Yeah, Tom uh, will not mince words with you. And, you know, with the great success that he had at Houston before he got here, Actually had an opportunity for the LSU job before taking the one here in Texas. This was his dream job. He grew up wanting to be a Longhorn head coach. Good relationship with Matt Brown. A lot of reasons why he want to come to Texas, that's for sure. Deontay Ingram in the backfield and a timeout taken by Texas Tech. We will take it with him. Brother versus brother, schooler versus schooler. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be scripted this way. After redshirting his senior year at Oregon due to a foot injury, Brendan had transferred to Arizona to play with his younger brother, Colin, a star linebacker. Both grad transfers lost that chance to join forces when the Pac-12 opted out earlier. Then, because of 2021 COVID concerns, wanting to play immediately, Colin transferred to Texas Tech. Brandon winds up at Texas, which he felt would be a better opportunity for him. The Longhorns lost their two top receivers, as everyone knows, Colin Johnson and Devin Duvernay, to the NFL. And there was an article in The Athletic, and they did not hold back on their criticism of the Pac-12, and specifically the commissioner, waiting as long as he did to bring football back. There is a post corner, incomplete, looking for, guess who? Right on cue, Brendan Schooler. Before that play, both these quarterbacks combined were perfect nine for nine. This one just over the head would have been a remarkable catch. Schooler tried to track it, and it was just beyond a little short-armed effort to get it on the other end. Tremendous job of trying to track that ball down. That's a tough one in these lights, man. That sun bright beaming down on you. Good effort. Will lead to a field goal opportunity. I don't know if you saw Larry Scott interviewed by Rob Stone and the guys earlier today on the Big Noon kickoff, but it was good to see him and great to have the Pac-12 back. Now no the question. entire Power Five is playing college football. Everyone's doing it a little bit differently, but they're all back in some way, shape, or form. Slight angle to the left, and Dicker, the kicker, puts it through, and the Longhorns lead by three. That's why they call him Dicker, the kicker. Fox College Football is sponsored by Wendy's New Pretzel Bacon Pub Cheeseburger. Emphasis on the cheese there, Spencer. Uh, I like that. 10-7 our score. Longhorns leading by three. Although I'm trying to cut back on the cheese. <laughs> by the way, that Ellinger incomplete pass for Schooler was the first of the game by either team. Yep. Bowman is 5-for-5. Five five. Ellinger 6-for-7. Here at the outset. Yeah, they were combined nine for nine prior to that short on miss one to Schooler attempt in the end zone for the score, but came up short. Keyshawn Carter awaits the kick. And he'll stay in the end zone. They'll bring it out. Well, today's matchup is featured on the free to play Fox Bet Super 6 app. 78% of Super 6 users pick Texas to win this game outright. Matt Wells, who by the way is a huge fan of Spencer Tillman, believes that he has <laughs> believes he has his autograph on a sweatband from back in the 1985 season, I think it was. Well, he hung out around <laughs> Salisaw, Oklahoma. He, he knew all those small towns. Yes, man. he did. Third year Texas Tech. So Roderick Thompson. He's really high on this youngster, isn't he? And why wouldn't you be? That's Joseph Asai. Osai making the stop, number 46. And Tim, he's so involved. Is his quarterback and his coach and his running back in the overall scheme of what's happening? 
Well, they were looking for a little screen pass that time with Sir Roderick. Pass just a little too far outside. And it'll be third down and seven as we look at that Horns defensive front. We mentioned the four-man alignment. Keep an eye up front for Taquan Graham. He figures to be an outstanding pass rusher, which has been noticeably missing. Osai, we touched on an outstanding linebacker. And uh, Josh Thompson leads the way in that secondary at corner. This defense going to a new scheme. And again, Taquan Graham, we talked to Chris Ash, the defensive coordinator, said he's serious about his craft. I mean, he's an outstanding guy. You want to keep your eye on him. Third down, seven. Three by one receiver set and this pass over the middle almost picked off well defended they were looking for John Holcomb the tight end coming in underneath well defended by Adamara number one Chris Adamara backing up at a spur position doing a really nice job yeah, and you just mentioned the spur position this is one of the skill sets you've got to be able to have to be able to defend the pass with those long arms and disrupt things so as to not create conflict a lot of times you get linebackers in there who are a little bit more stout they tend to get a little handsy a little body a little bit too much body in there and it draws penalties excellent job of defending there by Adam Moore. Austin McNamara number 31 will punt it away out of Gilbert Arizona pretty good pat, pat rush that time and there's a fair catch called by Deshaun Thompson just shy of the 30-yard line well built for success is presented by Rocket Mortgage or personalized playbook on home loans Rocket can. Well, it's a Sam Ellinger. How do you beat the rush? It's five, so technically it is a blitz. Ellinger sees an opportunity here, and he's got off coverage. He throws that ball to the outside shoulder, trying to exploit where the grass is, taking a page out of what Texas Tech is used to doing, exploit the grass. This one over the shoulder, only where the receiver can get it. Folks at home, that's dropping a dime. It all begins with a solid foundation, just like when you're getting home, right? Yeah, right. indeed. That was against Tech on Thanksgiving weekend a year ago. Texas won big. He's on Robinson, the freshman, takes it ahead for four. Stopped by Rico Jeffers. We're going to be calling his name quite a bit. Interesting in this series, Texas has been dominant, yes. But in recent years, Texas Tech has had a couple of wins, both coming in Austin. They haven't won in this building since Crabtree made that catch. And, yeah, you'll, you'll be hearing about that a little bit later on. Back in 2009. I wonder what it's going to take for them to get out of this three-man look. Those guys are scooting up around the line of scrimmage trying to show pressure. Now they're finally bringing it. Up the cut, the go. Guy. Robinson just shy of the first down. Leggett the stop. It'll be third and a yard to go. Well, that's the third tackle we've seen from Leggett coming down from that, that high safety position. They're going to be working on him all day. Well, Texas Tech struggling to get lined up. They go wide receiver. Screen this time. And it's... High money again out of that slot position. Going to get a lot of playing time today. We, we touched on Jake Smith, the H receiver, being out. So is Jordan Whittington, who wears number four, played big in the opener. I'm hoping to get both of them back next week, which means a lot of schooler and a lot of high money today. Quick out pattern that time to Marcus Washington, number 15. Sophomore from St. Louis. Marcus Ingram out there defending. And again, just a nice pitch and catch to the edge. And Texas Tech getting nickel and dime here a little bit. We'll see if they try to affect change. Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator, is going to have to make a business decision here eventually. Nothing has really slowed down this Longhorn offense. Keith actually turned down an opportunity to work in Memphis with his old friend Mike Norvell to come and Rejoin with a coach that he knew a great deal about in Matt Wells. Here comes pressure. And Ellinger is flushed, has some room though, and he can run. Look at him go. That's as easy a gain of about 15 or 18 as you'll ever see, maybe 20. Well, part of that combination, Adrian Fry, number seven, was involved in pressure off the edge. A couple of guys were trying to be in hot pursuit of him, but number 11 just eluded the pressure, seated that ball in the right, the right hand to the line of scrimmage, protecting it so he got the extra yardage without having to stiff somebody. That's, that's a pretty good heads-up play there. Well, we got a banged-up uh, Eric Monroe. The looks safety. like number 11, yep, the senior transfer out of uh, Nevada most recently. Hales from Houston, Texas. And we'll take a quick timeout. Monroe seems to be okay. We probably will see a few stops of play today for guys just to catch their breath, if nothing else, in this in this heat today. Spencer, both teams playing at a lightning pace. 
He's eight out of nine today. Also has rushed it five times for 31 after that 15-yard jaunt. I mean, we talked about he's 12 and 0 when he's throwing for a 70% clip. Right now, he's on pace to do better than that. Longhorns have doubled up. Texas Tech in total yards here in the early going. Keontae Ingram is the setback on first down. Well, Ellinger had to keep that one. It may have been designed. Whether it was or wasn't, it was snuffed out quickly by Rico Jeffers. He had a little help, too, from Tony Bradford, 97. I tell you, you're not going to find a better Sam linebacker in the conference right now. Rico Jeffers, number six, off the ball, able to get to the edge and fall on that back inside. I think that snap was low, Spencer, yeah. and forced Ellinger's hand. So he lost a yard. It's second down and 11. Just a two down line and now almost three. Showing blitz up the gut. Ellinger with time. And help. The pass wow. is caught. Joshua Moore. Touchdown, Texas. Ellinger knew he had mano a mano. The help came, Spencer. But the safety drifted over late. Well, Jamarcus Ingram was on the back end, number 22. But watch Joshua Moore go up and high point this ball. This is how you do it. If you're watching at home between them, he sights that thing and catches it at the highest point. I mean, the throw and release, a little bit impeded. But again, you got the safety, Thomas Leggett, coming over. But I'm telling you, man, between the two of them, showing the concentration, knowing you're going to get hammered, and to bring that ball in, that will instill confidence in your quarterback. He's going to be a frequent target. Leggett was a little late in reacting and more an acrobatic reception. Well, he got a touchdown on the opening play from scrimmage against UTEP. That is a memorable catch. And Ellinger absolutely roped it. You could say he's cool these days. <laughs> Ellinger sometimes wanted it too much. Accuracy was affected. Not there. Now the numbers, Spencer, are becoming staggering. 100th <laughs> career total touchdown, most among active FBS players. 74 via the past 26 rushing. The thing that's missing to put him up there with the McCoys and the Vince Youngs, titles yep. and big game victories. Keyshawn Carter awaits this kick and once again relatively deep into the end zone, he'll take a knee. Well, nobody's been more prolific over the last two years in terms of overall production than Sam Ellinger, man. Again, I think it's because of the balanced scheme that they do run, where it doesn't seem as sexy as, let's say, a Trevor Lawrence and those guys who are airing it out a little bit more. But in terms of just raw numbers, he's, he's an elite player. Well, now it's incumbent upon Alan Bowman to answer the challenge. There you see the all-time ranks at Texas, total yards, touchdowns, etc. Well, they're going to have to do something impressive. That last drive was seven plays, 70 yards. Took up just 309, but it was impressive. This is Chedarius Townsend just into the game. The Alabama transfer. And he's ahead past the 25 to the 27-yard line. They have high hopes for this young man out of Tanner, Alabama. Really impressive with how Texas is flying around defensively. Chris Ash has really got these guys moving. He told us he was excited about what they have in terms of potential. They've not had those elite defenses in recent years. Second and eight, nowhere to go. Absolutely nothing there. Texas snuffed it out. That, that uh, group up front, Ojibo, 98, sophomore from Katy, Texas. He is stout up there. They're sporting 340 pounders. 305 pound athlete Collins also involved on that stop. We're through one in Lubbock. Texas leads by 10, and the virtual fans at home are lapping it up. Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Now we open up the second quarter with a critical third down here for Bowman. The way the Longhorns are going up and down the field, they can't afford to give them the ball back this soon. Trailing by 10. Sir Roderick Thompson is now in the backfield. Long setback trips to the bottom of your screen. Going for the home run pitch. Yeah, he had a step or two. That was T.J. Vasher, the intended receiver. Going for it all right there. However, they're going to have to give it back quickly now to Texas. Basher working from that Z position, which is the inside. It's almost like a slot position. And the ball was just a little bit thrown, but he got behind the defense. That's true. That's for sure. You okay with that call? 
going for a home run ball right there, looking maybe for a pass interference, you know something what? I, like that? I think you're setting that up for something later. You just tell them to back off. You know, I, I think I like it. I have no problem okay. with the call. Austin McNamara will punt it away. Deshaun Jamison is back deep. Fair catch is called for at the 33. You know, Bowman led his team down the field his first attempt 75 yards with no problem but Ellinger lighting it up 9 of 10 101 and that uh, frozen rope that he throwed that that he threw to Joshua Moore to give them the 10 point lead that is the pass of the day to this point Bowman knows that his offense has got to answer yeah those those Ellinger numbers represent those three drives and again on those three drives you have four different receivers now with two catches and uh, that's what's impressive. He's distributing the ball effectively. 25% capacity here at Jones AT&T Stadium. About 16,000 on hand for this game. Great pocket presence. Ellinger is going for the back shoulder. Tariq Black, the Michigan transfer. A young man that was hurt most of his career in Michigan. Yeah, Tariq's out there that why that X position. And again, I'm not sure why that ball was thrown as short as it was on that side because that, he had plenty of time to Ellinger. Looked like a possible mix-up in terms of the Could route that Tariq was running versus what Ellinger had in mind. Yeah, because Sam Smith makes that play 90% of the time. Second and 10. Rashad Johnson has come in for Keontae Ingram in the backfield. And Johnson, Texas Tech defensively knows it needs to answer the bell here for Keith Patterson. You know, they, they thrive on creating turnovers. They've got to eliminate explosive plays. Well, guess what? Joshua Moore had one. Yep. And now they're going to have to try to get some extra possessions for their offense. There's uh, Keith. He'd been at Tulsa with uh, Crackthorpe, as had Matt, the head coach. Long legacy, Steve Crackthorpe, yep. the former... University of Tulsa, LSU. Did a great job uh, sure at did. Tulsa. Turned that thing around before going to Louisville and then joined, at that time, Les Miles and stayed on with Ed Orgeron when he took over. Ellinger, with that out pattern, fought for. Was it caught? I believe they're going to rule incomplete. Kate Brewer, the tight end, the intended receiver. So the Red Raiders get a much-needed stop and force a three and out. Yeah, Kate, Kate Brewer was a, a lead blocker on the previous play. Now he's out working in the route. That shows you the kind of creativity, attempting the one-handed catch, the creativity that Mike Yurcic has. He's building something that's really unique here that we're seeing. And now you've got to defend it. You don't see it now, but Texas Tech has got to be prepared for those formation, those looks. Alex Hogan was there in coverage. Adrian Fry is the deep safety awaiting this punt. From Buczewski. Almost got it. It did affect the punt, no question. It was almost a poop poop, too. That was almost blocked by the Red Raiders. Darius Townsend. <laughs> he came awfully close. Tomorrow, a huge doubleheader on Fox First. The Bears take on the Falcons. Other regional action, then it's Dak and Zeke leading the Cowboys against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. It's America's Game of the Week. Check local listings for the games in your area or watch on the Fox Sports app. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman here. Texas Tech tries to answer after their defense got the much-needed stop. And there is Ezekama ahead for a first down. Sean Jamison, the cornerback, got beat on that one. A little nice little punch downfield and pivot turn to completion. You can see those three possessions, three and out after that 75-yard drive to open the game, which wound up tying the score at seven. So Roderick Thompson back in. Keyshawn Carter was the key in that opening drive with three receptions, including the touchdown number 82. Well, this pace and tempo, the reason why they get up there so fast, they're not trying to run the play. They're trying to see what the defense is in to get the right play called. Well, jet sweep action coming. Miles nice Price, a double pass, and it's incomplete. Flag down. Looked like a jet sweep. They sold it beautifully, Spencer. Yeah, they're going to get I Josh Thompson on this. Again, Josh wasn't aware where the ball was. You're absolutely right, partner. Trey Cleveland, the intended receiver. Thompson in coverage. Here's the call. Pass interference, number nine. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. 
automatic first down. Well, that tells you how's important, how important this drive is to the Tech staff. Well, Josh Thompson wasn't able to look back and play the ball. He was in a man coverage scheme. So, you know, you give him credit for playing the technique, but again, you got to be mindful of it. Sometimes if you're good, the good safeties are able to peek in the backfield, take a look at what's taking place, and then try to make a play on the ball. Price, yes, is throwing the ball a time or two. Freshman from Colony, Texas. How about that move? Put your foot in the ground and then sidestep a guy or two. So Roderick is stopped behind the line, though. And Deshaun Jamison came in off the edge and watch him make him miss. Number five, the cornerback. Watch him on the left side of your screen here. He comes in. Whoop! He just reached <laughs> underneath him. This guy right here is quick as a hiccup, man. DeMarvian Overshawn comes away with the tackle. Wearing the numeral zero, which is allowed in college football this year. Only thing to keep from having redundant numerals, right? As long as they get the whistle yeah. thing volume fixed, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, they need to work on the electronic whistle. We got Blandino on it. Second and 14, there's the nice. slip. It's Carter, it's touchdown. Now the free safety. Caden Stearns, the free safety, number seven. Nice job of splitting this coverage. You can see him working on the inside, just turns and pivots his numbers. That's what you call finding the grass. It's a soft spot. Now, if Carter continues his path, he covers himself. The safety is able to get on the top. But when he takes a peek and see that safety mirrored in front of him, he's going to slow down and kind of drift into that little void where the quarterback can find him. Keyshawn's got great speed. It was evidence there in high school first 100 meter dash in the national junior olympic championships 10.35 on the clock you talk about smoke through a keyhole <laughs> it's a three-point game fox college football presented by ram built to serve and is sponsored by state farm like a good neighbor state farm is there Well, uh, once again, Keyshawn Carter with that great speed of his, a factor. Three plays, 49 yards. That was a must drive for Texas Tech after getting the stop. Carter with that excellent body control, too, to finish that playoff. It was one of the subtle things that you don't see a lot of times, but it made the play. You know, and Bowman is um, really an outstanding quarterback. His only problem has been staying healthy, you know, and he's so much more effective, and this Texas Tech team, is when he's available to them. Well, Timmy, he can ball. I remember yeah. he threw for 605 and broke. Uh, uh oh, back. look at here. Uh oh, he got it. He got it. They went to it. It went 10, and it's Trey Wolf on top of it. This is how you steal possessions. We talked about this in our production meeting last night. Stealing possessions. It's all about the element of surprise. Again, there's no reason why any reasonable coach would think that that would be in the offing. Not been able to stop either one of the offense. Don't panic. <laughs> Brilliant play design. Spencer, he's sitting down just over the line. Yep. They saw something on film that Texas receiving team was soft up front and they took advantage. Well, it's counterintuitive. Again, I know those guys are trained to have the ability to go jump on that ball, but when it's trickling like that, it's counterintuitive to go sprint to jump on the ball, but because you're looking for it to go at least 10 yards, Tim. Outstanding job by Wolf. And they are going to review it, we're told, and I understand that. Well, there's no question. It's under further review. But, but it's, it was clean. Yeah, no question. With Absolutely Tim, yeah. clean. Our referee, Scott Campbell. Scott's been lifting some weights. <laughs> All right, here it is. He's actually sitting down on the other side of the, the line there, Boy, he, right there. Yeah. And the ball comes right to it. Boom. Again, it's got to go 10. Defense is on its heels, no question. And he is sitting down the 45. And he is line. sitting oh. down the 45. I don't know how you can say that that's not legal. Uh, Dean Blandino has more for us back in our studios in Los Angeles. Dean? Yeah, the key with the touch, there's two things. There's the touching, which the kicking team can't touch it till it goes 10 yards, which this part looks clean. If you watch it, it's the 45-yard line. That's a plane. So he's going to just cross that 45 
and then he's going to recover it. The second part of this is the blocking. Yeah. Now, the kicking team cannot block until they're eligible to touch it, and that might be what they're looking at here as well. <laughs> well, the block actually did not take place until after he'd recovered it, but I see what you're well, talking it's, about. It's almost simultaneous. Yeah. In, in that yeah. situation, if it's simultaneous, Dean, what, what's the verdict yeah. then? I think the contact Dean has made after he brings it in. Watch here. I think it's simultaneous. Yeah. That's bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. What do you think? It looks like it looks like the block occurs just as the ball gets to the 45, which would make it legal. Yep, okay. that's legal. Yep. Just like in baseball, tie goes to the runner. The call will stand, we're told. And again, Spencer, when you're a team like Texas Tech, a prohibitive underdog in a Big 12 game at home, you're playing Texas, they're ranked eighth in the country, tied with Auburn coming in smelling their first title in over a decade. Oklahoma's just lost a game to open at home against Kansas State. These kinds of moments, an opportunity to steal possessions, those 50-50 opportunities have to go with you, and that one did. Yeah, I think they know you and I have called their last two wins. <laughs> Both in Austin. Both, Both in, in Austin. Austin, yeah. <laughs> they, they've not won here, as we mentioned, since 08. It was actually 08 when Fratry made that catch against the Longhorns cost him number one in the country that yep, year. sure did. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Texas Tech. Our thanks to Dean. The clock operator. Our machinations were actually all right. Yes, we they were, were. We were good. And this crowd is right on, too. Yeah. For 25% capacity, they're pretty noisy. Well, we've been here before for, for games when Mahomes was quarterbacking mm -hmm. Texas Tech. And this is the biggest of home games for Texas Tech. Under normal circumstances, uh, there wouldn't be a seat in this house. Xavier White, number 14, the redshirt sophomore, is in it running back now. He's the third of the quartet. Only Taj Brooks, 28. A young man coming right out of high school from Manor, Texas. Now, Jimmy, the only one we've not seen. If Texas stays in his 2 deep look, there's going to be some running lanes here in these early plays, but they may take a shot, too. Just over 12 remaining in the second quarter. On first down, Bowman looking long into double coverage, and the safety has the pick. It's Chris Brown coming the other way. That one hung in the air on Bowman. Yep. And the Longhorns get it back. Not surprised that they took the shot. It was what I was commenting on just a second ago. Again, you got to understand, you got a guy behind the coverage. You got to get enough air underneath that. He's got a big enough arm to make that play. We've seen him make that many times before. Timmy, this is what he's looking at again. It's just a four-man rush, no pressure underneath. And he just, for whatever reason, doesn't set himself in a proper angle to get his base underneath him and get everything into that throw. Just left it a little bit short. Chris Brown, the fifth-year senior out of Houston, coming away with that interception. Now you, the quarterback's got to get his platform established and put everything, his hips, into a throw like that. So now the horns from their 49, and it's Keontae Ingram. Mm. He's ahead for five, maybe six. Eric Monroe back in the game was injured earlier, making the tackle. There's some hitting going on down there now, Tim. Yes. <laughs> Interesting, uh, the Seth Collins story. He is back out there playing the safety position. Mm -hmm. Probably a surprise to Texas because they were looking at defending him on the offensive end as a wide receiver. There he is. Just moved in the last week to 10 days to play the safety position. Got to get your best athletes out in the field if you're shorthanded. Brad Player wants to play. He knows that they have some outstanding wide receivers. Went to his coaches and said, hey, you know, I, I think I could play safety. Why not have me Texas Tech. Second out on the field? I, I need to play. Timeout taken by Texas Tech. Transfer from Oregon State. Playing safety now. Tonight on Fox Saturday Baseball, Christian Yelich and the Brewers take on the Cardinals or in other regional action, Bryce Harper and the Phillies take on the playoff bound Tampa Bay Rays. That's tonight at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Check local listings for the game in your area as we get close to playoff time. Another reason to like the Dodgers, you know, they're beating the Angels while the Houston Astros are getting. <laughs> Second and five, they go option to the wide side and it's Keontae Ingram. Pushed out by Brandon Boyer Randall. So it'll be third down and three coming up after a gain of only two. 
how quickly both teams have through the course of this game. Two for five on third down for Texas. Red Raiders haven't had that many, but they're 0 for two. A little movement up for Texas. Yeah, that's going to be a false start. Ball start, number 75, offense, five-yard penalty. Bangalore, sophomore from Salt Lake City, Utah, the guilty party. Junior got a little bit anxious there in his left guard position. That was one of the points and positions I had kind of ID. I wasn't quite sure what kind of play they were going to get from that. We knew what Samuel Kazi was going to be about. He's he's the stalwart on that front at the left tackle position. We've only seen Kate Brewer targeted one time, Spencer. This is a down and distance where number 80 has figured into the equation in the past for mm -hmm. Sam Allinger. The tight end, yep. Keontae Ingram is the lone setback out of the gun. Going four wides, four verts. Taking a shot here. Ellinger. How about that? How about that? To the tight end, Kay <laughs> Brewer. How about Kay On Brewer? Cue, Jimmy. Nice job of, with off coverage. Tight end just a nice job of just kind of sitting it down. That's called a read route. Find the equal distance between the two closest defenders. Let your quarterback put it on you. There's the quick out on the wide receiver screen. Avante Woodard, number nine. With the reception, stopped by Eric Monroe. And as Brewer, again, your boy on the outside helping him out there. That little tight end lined up now at the widest position on the field, getting the extra block that allowed the runner to get four extra yards. Second and three after the gain of seven. Ingram. Well, Texas Tech at the point of attack does a nice job. You know, this is uh, a defense that's changed, too. We talk about Texas going to the four-man front. Keith Patterson, defensive coordinator here at Texas Tech. This has been a much maligned, historically, Texas Tech defense for many, many years. And one of the things that Patterson loves is the fact that Matt Wells does give him autonomy, but he stays in contact with him. He's a hands-on CEO. And it's not coach. a micromanaging kind of thing. It's just that he's so informed, and it helps you out when you have more minds on the problem. On third and two, low snap from center. Second time that's happened. And it's Ingram on the receiving end. He did get close to the sticks. Let's see. Tim, I think the actual inability to seek that ball actually yep, he added got it. to it. Yep. Added to some of the creativity on that play. Yeah, he pretty much had to go there, didn't he, mm -hmm. after the low snap. Second time that's happened from Herstetter, 68. The center for this Texas team, highly thought of, by the way. But we're early in the season. <laughs> very, very early. First and 10 with the ball at the Red Raider 25. Longhorns lead it by three. Roshan Johnson, well diagnosed by Texas Tech. That's Big Nick McCann, number 98, the young man from Texarkana that had to leave the game briefly. Big Came Nick, through with vengeance this time. Big Nick McCann, Texarkana. That's Bowie County, if I'm not mistaken. He comes in there, <laughs> I'm telling you, get that head across the body, man, and plays that zero technique. He's hey. strong, big fella. Hey, my, wife, my wife's got relatives in Texas. Is that right? Oh, there's some gloriosos right. there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Second and 10. Ellinger decides to tuck it. Mm -hmm. And that's why. Look at him go. Inside the five. Down to the one. <laughs> Adrian Fry with the saving tackle. Hey, he just sifted through there, didn't he? Oh, Carry that he ball did. high and tight like a there's nothing tiki he doesn't barber. See. There's nothing he doesn't see. Mm -hmm. First and goal. Johnson the setback. And it's Roshan. Touchdown. And Thomas Leggett came in there like he has on four of the occasions tonight, but just a little bit too late. Johnson with an excellent job of using his leverage to get in and score. But how about Elliger on that yeah, drive? He man? set that up beautifully. Big time. Little mesh point here. Seats it in the pocket because that end was screaming at him. That's the read you make if you're Ellinger. Now if that end kind of slides down the line of scrimmage, Ellinger is going to ride that, ride that, ride and then pull it out the last second and walk it in. You know, Yurisic, I thought, last night when we visited with Texas before the game, uh, that was the thing he, that jumped out to him when he joined this organization to be with Ellinger. And listen, this is the third time there's been a coordinator change for Sam. Yurisic is a schemer, a gamer. He really appreciates what Sam can do. Look at his 
cognizant of the ball, carrying it high in his pocket, man. Just ball security and determination. That's outstanding. Fox College Football is sponsored by Allstate. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman here in Lubbock, Texas. Nine plays, 51 yards, just over four minutes off the clock. And Roshan Johnson cleans up after the 24-yard jaunt by Sam Ellinger to give Texas a 10-point lead. You can make a case that uh, sequence, and it was a pretty amazing sequence, turned into a uh, potential 14-point swing. Texas Tech, with all that momentum, it cut it to three. Now they're going to get great field position. And then the pick, as you see Keyshawn Carter, who has been the star of this game for Texas Tech. One of the things you'll notice about Matt Wells' coach teams is they are going to have their best players on special teams. Everyone's got to buy in. Here's that sequence that we're talking about. Trey Wolf with a just perfect execution on the dog sides. And so you're lathered up if you're a Red Raider fan, but Chris Brown, yeah. yeah, on the interception here, did a fantastic job of siding that ball and bringing it down. And then the inside run. This, of course, was set up. The touchdown was by the 24 yards of Ellinger on that nice, high-handed, secure run to get him down to the green zone. So once again, Texas Tech finds themselves really in the same spot, a drive that they really must convert. As you see the numbers on Allen after that first drive, two of three cents. And the interception to go with it. Xavier White is in the backfield. And here he is again. Backside pressure. Ball is loose. Still loose. And it's picked up by Texas. That's number six. He's lost it as he goes into the end zone. Jawan Mitchell. That'll be a touchdown. He scooped it up and took it right in. They have uh, ruled it a fumble. A pickup, a scoop and score for Jawan Mitchell. Well, Tim, Texas had pressure coming off that far outside. And again, it was coming from different Osai. levels. Osai got it. Osai came in yep. there, got that hand in there, and just punched it out. Yep. Now the scramble. There's Osai. I don't know, Spencer. He's moving forward. I don't know. I think they may have to rule that one incomplete. He did not. He did not tip the ball. He got the arm. The arm is moving forward with the ball. This could be called back. Mitchell scooped it up, and Dean Blandino is back in Los Angeles. Let's see what Dean has to say. So the key is the hand. Is the hand coming forward with control of the football? Certainly appears to be. And, and to me, this is an incomplete pass. Replay will look at this. And, uh, and make this an incomplete pass. And this is a great look here. It is, Dean, because he gets arm, but that arm motion still goes forward with control of the ball. You're absolutely right. That's, okay, an, so that's, a, that's an easy call to make. Yeah, yeah, contact was made, but the arm was still going forward. I, I get it. Dean, would the ball, if the ball is tipped if, in any way, if Osai had gotten a hold of the football, though, that would make it a different call, correct? Yeah, and, and they'll call that an empty hand. Typically, you yep. see the defender make contact with the football. The hand comes forward, but the ball is already loose. Here, the contact is on the arm, like you see, and the hand does come forward with control. And it's any movement forward. It could be yep. you know, just a slight movement, and, and obviously, um, it's going to be a pass. Yeah, and now what they're doing is obviously resetting the line of scrimmage, and that's what the officials are, are doing. Yeah, the contact affected the execution of the throw, but it didn't dislodge the ball. Right. I understand that would make sense. So that will nullify the big turnover and touchdown for Texas. And they can breathe a sigh of relief here in Lubbock. The Red Raiders faithful. With Joseph Asai playing that jack position, that's why they have him over there, Tim. The jack requires you to be able to drop back. you got to have vision. you got to be able to rush the passer. got to be proficient in run stopping as well. But they live for those moments yep. to be able to make a play on the ball. I think they're checking out to just make absolutely certain where the line of scrimmage was. Officials were talking with Matt Wells. Both Texas' defense and the Red Raiders' offense went back out onto the field. But, again, it was ruled a fumble and a touchdown. Here's the After call. After review, it was an incomplete pass. It's going to be second down and 10 on the 25 yard line. Dino does it operator. again. Perfect. He's reset yep. the game clock. Seven minutes. And the score remains seconds. 24 to 14. And uh, Alan Bowman will take the new life 
Osai coming off the edge. And Spencer, we talked about it earlier with this 4-2-5 setup. The linebacking core is probably the thinnest area for Texas this year. They've got a lot of DBs. And they feel like Taquan Graham, who we had a chance to visit with, a senior from Temple, Texas, can bring a little bit more of a pass rush, number 49, defensively. And Osai is playing outside him. Well, that's what Chris Ash is doing. He's playing where his skills, his players allow him to play his best football. Out pattern complete to Jalen Pope, number 12. The freshman out of Lufkin, Texas. Same city that produced Kiki Kudi. Remember Kiki Kudi? Yeah. And uh, also Des Bryant is from uh, Lufkin, Texas. Kiki is Houston, Texas. Yeah. He needs to stay healthy and hang on to the football. There's TJ Vasher for a first down on the quick slam. Bowman now 9 of 14, 119 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Four wides trying to put some pressure on this Texas coverage team. Screen to White. Pretty good move and a few string tackle made by Adamora, number one. As he moved to that position, former defensive back, you can see how tough he can be in there, number one. Yeah, he's another hybrid type player, plays that spur position. But again, when you see guys that are in that position, they bring an extra set of skills when you see four wide receivers out there. Second and seven. It's White looking to pop it. And he's out ahead, looks to be very close to the necessary yardage for the first down. Was he juggling that ball? Yeah, Jawan, Jawan Mitchell did make the stop. He was juggling it a little. I'm going to mark it just beyond the 45. Third, about a half yard. Out of the gun, White. I think he may have gotten some mass there, but I don't see a flag. So sorry, in his jack position. Getting a little handsy there. I thought I saw 46 grab the cage, but let it go really quickly. I think Texas Tech, both of these teams, I think would prefer not having the penalty and play on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as fast as they play. Delayed blitz. Well, that one was that deflected. Pressure, man, that pressure's been frequent and it's been well timed. Oh, oh sigh again. I think they're saying that might have been a pickup for a touchdown. Texas believes that's a live ball. It is it. Boy, on the field, it's an incomplete forward pass. Second down. Yeah. That wasn't going to keep Osai from running. Arm is moving forward, no question about it. Osai came from the backside yet again. Texas was hoping that that was going to be considered a fumble. It was not. Much easier call than even the first one, the previous one. Huge series here for Texas Tech to answer before halftime. Maintaining contact with this stronger, deeper Texas team, awfully important. So Darius Townsend, the setback. Out pattern again, and this one's complete. Dalton Rigdon, the junior, with his first catch out of Perriton, Texas, from that H slot. That was an important chain mover there, Tim. Just shy of the line to make, a couple of yards leading. This pass is caught. Speared by Azukama. Look at him go inside the 30 and down to the 25 of Texas. Well, this ain't rocket science. Azukama just basically breaks through there and comes underneath off of that natural rub on the vertical route that was right in front of him. Boy, that was a, just a heads up job of him getting in there as we've got a down Texas Longhorn on the field well, around the 30. Well, as I said earlier, they're playing fast. Adamora is down. And, a few of the 16,000 thinking that he stayed down by design. And you can see he's breathing hard. No question about that. Timeout, 10 point lead for Texas, just over five minutes left in the half. The sophomore from Lakewood, California, Chris Adamora, taking a seat. <laughs> he may have been more tired than hurt right there. Back in the old days, brother. Jerry Glanville was never in a hurry to get us back in a situation. <laughs> Is she wounded? Yeah, your days with the Oilers? <laughs> back in the days, man. At the end, take as they say, as you were playing out the string. That's right. <laughs> Jadarius Townsend in the backfield. Well, here he goes. That's Price once again on the jet sweep. He threw out of that formation earlier, and they were able to induce the pass interference. Jawan Mitchell, number six, making the tackle as Price gets out ahead for a pickup of seven. Price was right on that play. Nice piece of running. Yeah, they'll actually call it eight. Second down along two. 
Townsend remains the setback. Resnap movement. This may be a free one. Going for the post corner. It nice. is caught in the corner. Ezukama. Wow. Ezukan. Touchdown. Texas Tech. You talk about contested balls. This is the second one that Texas Tech has won. Excellent coverage on the outside by Josh Thompson. He even turns around and locates the ball. I'm telling you, this is just a clinic here on how to high point and give yourself a cushion in that corner for a margin of error. These Texas Tech players can go up and get the ball, man, with the best of them. Well, great presence by Bowman. He knew he had a free one. Ojimo, 98, came off sides. Cadence got it. Then he said, why not? I'm going to throw a 50-50 ball to my 6'3 wide receiver. And by the way, all of those DBs for Texas are six feet and shorter. Well, they know the advantage. That's something they hadn't had to struggle with in the past. This is a different time. They're taking advantage of it, looking for it. That looked like a TJ Vasher catch from the past. We'll be back. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, see how Kansas State shocked third-ranked Oklahoma for the second straight year. Also in the Big 12, number 15, Oklahoma State taking on West Virginia. And it was an SEC shootout between Florida and Ole Miss. Tim Spencer, we'll see you guys at the break. You got it, Rob. Thank you. 24-21 as Azucama brings in a fantastic pass from Alan Bowman to make it a three-point game. Speaking of SEC being back in action, Spencer, who would have thought with Leach going to state <laughs> and the lane train in Ole Miss, their Q rating would be below the Jackson State head coach. <laughs> As you see, uh, Bowman, what a performance. And listen, this guy comes from tremendous pedigree. His dad, Kirk, yeah. made his mark decades ago as a member of Paterno's Penn State team, a reserve tight end with a less than flattering nickname, Stone Hands. He made two <laughs> catches in 1982, but he made the most of them. Both grabs against Tom Osborne's mighty Cornhuskers. Both went for touchdowns. How happy he must be. Of course, Penn State wrapped up the 82 year yep. with a national title. Our friend and colleague Todd Blackledge, who works with Sean McDonough over on ESPN, was the quarterback of that team. And I know Kirk is enjoying watching his son play today. Ahead goes Big John Robinson. Bijan stopped by Rico Jeffers. He's been all over the place today for the Red Raiders, Spencer. Yep, he has on the defense, but this offense is still the story for me on that last drive. 11 plays, 75 yards, just 305. And I was going to make a point, Tim, of the this the disadvantage in terms of time of possession. It was almost three to one, but it's almost a moot point now. Texas Tech's receivers are able to score when you get in that red area almost at will. Right. They are just physically taller, outmatched up in terms of the defender, defensive backs for Texas. Robinson. Texas Tech again in the middle has been stout. Rico Jeffers in run support yet again. Feeding off of what's happening on the other side of the ball. Jeffers playing on the other side of the ball. That's how you disrupt that little mesh read point. And that's how the option game gets disrupted. You have to play on the other side of the ball. And a lot of guys that get smart and understanding how to deal with the option game is they'll get in that no man's land and, and make the read kind of a quasi read for the quarterback and that's where you get indecision well this is when you're really happy if you're a texas fan to have a guy like ellinger at quarterback he's handled these situations many times before on third and seven with pressure up the middle passes incomplete airmailed a bit brendan schooler the intended receiver well, they are making some noise here in Lubbock right now. Adrian Fry was defending on the back end, but here you see that ball was delivered. And again, the pressure, there was more than five, at least five coming. It affected Ellinger. No, ball not on the spot as a result on the back shoulder incomplete. Sam, on occasion, when he's pumped up, will overthrow a few guys. Uh, and that's we've seen that in, in past big games that they've had. But boy, oh boy, does he see the game beautifully. Texas will punt it away. Adrian Fry. Wow, the ball's blocked. Papoom. And Texas Tech will get it at the 15. Timmy, here it is again. Go take it off the foot. That's what they encourage you to do. 
Outstanding job of getting the ball off of the foot there. That's Jaden York. Yeah, that's Jacob Morgenstern, 41. Well, it may have been York. We got dueling 41s. You're right. It yeah. could have been. If it's a special team guy, uh, yeah. I bet it's Jake York. I believe it's Jacob York. I believe it's Jaden York, 41. Reserve tight end. We have that in college football. The old dueling number routine. Yep. Well, you figure one of them's a start, and it, yeah. it could be even more complicated because Texas <laughs> Tech will use some of their starters on special teams. Absolutely. Jaden White is the setback. An opportunity here. Uh, ball on the ground. No problem with. The seeding of the ball off the snap from center from Dawson Deaton to Alan Bowman, and they back up. Not sure where Bowman's eyes were, but again, that was just a bad snap. Yeah, it was off to you know, the those, off, those offensive linemen are trying to get to those reach blocks, and it affects sometimes the way they're able to get rid of the ball. Second and 16. This oh. is in traffic, and it's intercepted. Adamora with a lot of room. I mean a lot of room going the other way. One cut back, and he could be gone. Stopped inside the 20 and credit Josh, Josh Berger with tremendous effort. The right tackle, number 50, did not give up on the play. And if they hold him to three, Spencer, that's going to be one of the big plays of the day. And Josh Berger's in the lower third of your screen of the play that just went past you. And he comes all the way over to the other side of the field and chases this guy down. He's got a convoy around him. He's got four blockers. Probably would have done better to stay on the inside. Big but fella. number 50, <laughs> Josh Berger. He lumbered down there. I'm telling you, man, he got over there in a hurry. Big fella. S senior transfer from Wofford. Did his knee touch? No, no it did no. not. He no. can put a dollar bill underneath that. He, he got that up clean, man. But the transfer from Wofford, Josh Berger, all 6'4", 295 pounds of him, lumbered downfield to make certain that he didn't get into the end zone. I thought that was going to be a touchdown in real time. I really did. Well, Coach Matt Wells is going to be coaching on that play. Even though it was a negative play, when you talk about effort and you're looking for guys who demonstrate that, yeah, yeah. That's, that's who you turn to. And they're going to look at that. We showed you a moment ago where his knee was going down, but it never actually took touch the turf now that was a clear inch yeah between his yeah. knee and the ground yeah you saw him brace himself as he went down the knee does not hit the ground now that's his shadow and it kind of makes yeah. it look difficult to see but this you got clearly an inch or more yeah this will be texas ball on the doorstep of texas tech and chris adamora <laughs> what a big play there and that is two times now Texas Tech Spencer went for the gusto. They had an onsides that led to a pick. Now they get a blocked punt to get the ball in the red zone and another interception. So this uh, opportunistic Texas defense has staved off a couple of big plays that Texas Tech had in special teams. Well, you know Matt Wells talked to us yesterday about how important special teams are to him and getting this team in a position where he can compete and be a difference maker. He spends a lot of time in all three After phases. Review, the ruling of interception is confirmed. First down, Texas. And again, when he says that, I don't think there was any question that the interception wasn't in doubt. It was whether his knee had been down and the return would be ruled okay, and it was. So Texas now with the ball at the 19. And again, another potential Spencer 14-point swing because of an interception. Well, if nothing else that comes from this, Texas Tech knows that they can compete and they can score. Allender out of the shotgun. That's Schooler in motion. He'll take it. Quick hitch to the wide receiver side into the boundary. And then Schooler gets at least six, maybe seven. Zach McPherson on the stop. Zach, one of the corners that's a senior by way of Columbia, Maryland, transferred from Penn State. Roshan Johnson now in the backfield, number two for Texas. Joshua Moore, number six, had that big reception earlier from Elliger. He is man-to-man -man at the bottom of your screen. Tim, this is a gimme. We go with Roshan Johnson. And he high hurdles for a first down inside the 10 to the 8. This is a great job of understanding where the weak spot of the defense is. And you can see it, Tim. It's like a soft spot. And you're Thomas Leggett. you got to get your shoulder, man. you got to really bow up on that guy and get front. You can't turn sideways.
to come with your high heels on. You got to come flat footed with intentionality. So first and goal with the ball at the eight yard line. You know, a good quarterback can take us, if he has latitude, can take a snapshot of the front and know where the weak parts of it is and get into the three or four handful of plays that he has to run in those situations. Right up the middle, Johnson. Stop by Merriweather. Sean Merriweather with his third tackle of the day. Ball rests at the six. It'll be second and goal. And a reminder, coming up, State Farm halftime show with Rob and the gang. Texas Tech will take a timeout. The shocker before us, Gus Johnson was there. You knew it had to be a wild one, right? Gus had the call with Joel. And Oklahoma goes down, so there will be a quick shakeup. In the early goings of not only the Big 12, but the national polls after week number one. Yeah, you know the narrative is not going to be good. As many as five on the back end of Kansas State's defense out due to COVID concerns. And I mean, that just is I amazing. Explain that, man. Chris Kleiman, a man came from North Dakota State and can coach. Oh, yeah? And uh, clearly, this is a Kansas State team, by the way, that just lost to Arkansas State Ooh, of the it, group bro. of five. And, well, the reason I mention it is, once again, just because it says group of five doesn't, doesn't mean they can't play. You look at the way UCF is continuing to yeah. play. Scott Frost planning to see there to get for him. Yeah. Between Cincinnati, who's had to deal with Army today, that's a tough one. Two top 25. Uh, in addition to UCF, this, um, this, this Sunbelt Conference with the likes of Arkansas State and Louisiana Lafayette and Coastal Carolina. These guys can play. Second and goal coming up with 113 remaining in the half. Had a chance to bring the your fly in the order? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always working on the fly in the order. Deontay Ingram in the backfield. Wow, coming out of a timeout. That's a cardinal sin. Plenty of time to think about it, and a pre-snap flag. Take a look at this jump right there. Jalen Hutchings and a reaction from Collins, Alfred Collins. Stetter. Waiting for the call from Scott Campbell, our referee. Offside, 95, Jaylen. defense. Jalen Hutchings. After this is the goal, let's go first down. A good move by the Wiley veteran center, Kerstetter at 68. Immediately after the move was made, he adjusted too to make sure the officials saw it. Well, it's hard to be discreet, though, when, <laughs> when you're playing a three man front, there's nobody to yeah. hide behind. <laughs> Can't really move it that far. You're on an island now. Down to the three yard line, second and goal. Ingram remains the setback. Schooler is in the slot left. There he is on the quick hitch. To the corner, touchdown. Brendan Schooler at set up shop in position to get that quick wide receiver screen, and he knew right where to go. Well, Texas Tech was really concerned about what was happening opposite of that play, trying to make sure they matched up with numbers wise. Miscommunication on the back end. Eric Moore, the safety, not quite sure knowing what to do. Not able to get off blocks on the back end is what was problematic for Texas Tech defenders. Great blocking by Eagles, the wide receiver. There were a couple in front of Schooler, but Brennan Eagles made the outstanding block. He's the team's leading returning receiver. He's made some big plays in his days as well. Dicker for the extra point. Well, here's the good news if you're Texas Tech. Special teams has been good to you. Fox executed on an on onside kick. And then the old, but then, but then this. Chris Brown takes it away, and then, boom! And you're thinking, oh, Texas Tech is going to be in great shape. Uh-uh. Here comes the pick, and when the moon hits your eye, that's uh, Adamora, right? There's Adamora taking it away, and that leads to the schooler touchdown. Wow. Two big plays that you would think Spencer would set up Tech. Instead, it went the other way for Texas. Well, it's all about taking advantage of opportunities, and to the degree that you can, you're going to convert points, particularly when you have the legacy that this franchise, I call it a franchise, because that's what it feels like when you watch how efficiently they run and throw the ball with this team, this concept. This air raid is a...
big time producer, man. I was talking earlier about how Alan Bowman, I think it was Houston, a couple of years back, it was his freshman year, threw for 605, which eclipsed all-time record for our, our freshman in terms of total yards thrown in a single game. Patrick Mahomes had owned the prior record. Well, one thing we know for sure, when you're a Texas Tech quarterback, you're likely to be at the top or near the top of uh, yards in a season. And Bowman is one of those, but he does have the two interceptions that have level things. Well, we've got a touchback. Spencer, I looked at uh, what's happened in this first half, though, for Texas Tech. They can come away with a feeling, anyway, that they can compete and that they can make some big plays against this Texas secondary. And, and no small part because of the length of their receivers. I mean, clearly there's a matchup that's there for them, and they're able to take advantage of it, and they have, despite the disparity in time of possession. I mean, it's almost been 3-1 to one prior to that last series. So Texas controlling the ball, but standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, Texas Tech. Let's see what they do with man coverage here. And if Deshaun Carter continues to be the man most targeted by Bowman. This one is underneath, you guess who, Keyshawn Carter, just underneath the 30-yard line. So, nice pickup of five. It'll be second down and five, and the clock continues to tick. Texas Tech did have to use some timeouts on defense. This pass is behind the receiver. That could be a lateral. It is picked back up by Xavier White. That was going to be a lateral, and the, the, the officials ruled it that way. And if Texas had just fallen on top of it, if Overshone had just fallen on top of it, they would have had the football. Yeah, X has got to be careful about that man, because you can tell in his body language. You can tell by his body language yeah. he was not quite sure. Yeah, he knew. Well, he, he knew after, but initially, yeah. watch his, his the, lax, the laissez faire manner in which he responds. Right, right. The ball is behind or lateral, but watch his body language. Yeah. See, he's kind of choking his motor. He needs to be all over that ball. He tells me he's, he's not aware of what the context of the situation is. Well, had the Texas defender not looked for a scoop and score and miss, it would have been Longhorn football in great shape. They're just going to let the clock wind down and think better of things, and why not? Another turnover is not something you want if you're Texas Tech at this stage. Well, it's a 10-point lead for Texas. Oh, by the way, Rob Stone, how do you do today? College football is powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. As you take a look at the first half numbers, you'll see that Texas controlled the football a great deal, but it was the element of the big play that was the difference maker for Texas Tech. As we welcome you back to Jones AT&T Stadium, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. It's those physical wide receivers no for the Red Raiders, Spencer, that have got to keep making big plays. Keyshawn Cotter, chief among them. I mean, he's the one that's allowed Allen uh, Moba to really get him in the end zone and stay there. High pointing those balls made a big difference. Twice time he was able to do that, Timmy. It showed you the height advantage they have over these long-arm defensive backs. And then Eric Esakama on the back end of that showed you exactly why this Texas Tech team will stay in the game. High pointing it, being effective on the back end, exploiting the six inch difference between some of those back end defenders for Texas Longhorns. And Keyshawn Carter will take a knee and Texas Tech deferred to open this game, Spencer. And as a result, will get the ball to open this second half. And they almost turned it over a third time you know, those three, those three turnovers are big, two of them interceptions, but they almost turned it over on what was a lateral to close out the first half, thought better of it, and uh, just took a knee. But I think they knew in their back of their minds they were going to get the ball to open the second half. This is a critical drive to open for the Red Raiders. Timmy, there's a lot of hidden yardage in this game, too. 93 of it in return yardage that Texas was able to take advantage of, and a, that including a two-to-one time of advantage and time of possession. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage off the pressure from Adamora. And he's had a whale of a first half. That time deflecting one from Bowman. So second and ten. So Roderick Thompson in the backfield, only eight yards rushing in that first half. They're using him really as a, a runner out of the short passing game with that quick screen. Caden Stearns with the stop of Sir Roderick. 
But the Longhorns have really forced Texas Tech into a one-dimensional style of offense. Well, they only have eight yards rushing, and so you're absolutely right. That was really the, one of the hidden secrets. They were able to be so effective in the throw game, and it's been history. Go back to days we've been oh, in yeah. games where Mike Leach has rushed the ball for three times, you know, <laughs> for three yards. On third and five, that curl is incomplete. Should have been caught. As a comma, that ball just came up on him. It was as if he just didn't expect it. It climbed on his jersey number there. Yeah, it happens sometimes when you're out of a break. Sometimes pressure can force this. Again, when you got man coverage, he's just, that's a nice little route on his part. Mm. The ball came hot and on the inside. Preferably, that ball needed to be on his downfield shoulder as opposed to up. It could have been easily intercepted by Jamison on the back end. Well, the downside of this offense, Spencer, is that if you go three and out, that's 39 seconds off the clock. Yep. And now your defense has got to go back out there. Deshaun Jamison awaiting the punt from McNamara. And, and, and the ball is tipped. That's going to be a score. That could be a score for Texas Tech in the end zone. The Red Raiders got it. Touchdown. Number three, Xavier Martin on top of it. How about that? Special teams again, Spencer. We know the sun is bright, but again, Jamison is trying to set up. The problem is, Tim, he doesn't square up on the ball. He turned sideways and tried to feel that thing, and he just lost a handle uh, on it. And you know, the second fumble, the second hit, Spencer, is what's devastating because this is a muff. If the, if the ball is not hit a second time, that's a muff uh -huh. and could not be returned. Now it goes all the way to the end zone, and Martin collects it for a touchdown. What a swing. What a swing. Great presence of mind. Again, we've seen special teams, whether it's an onside kick, being aware and alert when the ball is muffed and when it's not and when it's live. It's just a heads-up type of performance by this Texas Tech Red Raider offense. Well, there are special teams to go along with so much of the game. And, Spencer, this is why you put your best athletes out That's there. That's right. This is what Matt Wells has been talking about. Big plays, big days. And today, it's been all about special teams, Timmy. Oh, they have been so special. Deshaun Jameson, a dynamic punt returner. We have to give him that, but that's one that he lost. And the second loss, when the scramble took place, you rule out the muff. Now the ball is kicked a second time. Texas was involved in that touch. So that's a live ball, and by the time the ball came to a halt, it was in the end zone, and Martin picked it off in the end zone for the touchdown. Xavier with the really big play for Texas Tech. Think of all those missed opportunities they had, and now suddenly the Horns hand them one very easily. They had two tremendous special teams plays, that Texas Tech's offense could not take advantage of. And your confidence has got to be off the charts right now if you're Texas Tech. Well, you know, it's one of those unspoken aspects. Every phase of the game, right, Spencer? Yeah, doing a nice job of knowing the ball has to go 10 yards. And then, of course, the opportunity to block is always there. Beautiful technique, not crossing the body. And Jamison just mishandled this one. Texas laid this on the platter for him. And being alive, and to your point, partner, if it's not touched a second time, it's a muff. Right. But the fact that you're advancing into the end zone and it's touched that second time means it's a touchdown for Texas Tech. This game ends. And it's less than a touchdown, and, and Texas loses. They will remember that play for sure. Deontay Ingram is in the backfield. Corns leading now by three. As we open play in the third. Ingram. Deontay is strong. Carthage High School, Carthage, Texas. Surpassed 2,000 yards in his career. Jamarcus Ingram, 22, making the stop. He set a Carthage High School record with 76 career rushing touchdowns in high school. I know that is Pomona time. Yeah. <laughs> and a little RPO action here to Brendan Schooler. That's something that I think Herman really wanted to see Mike Yurisich bring to the table, Spence, particularly with a talent like Ellinger, a little more RPO. Yeah, he's not having to show much of what we thought he would show because of the time of possession. They've been so much in control, but the mistakes that pass is incomplete, intended for Tariq Black. And he comes up a little gimpy. We talked, touched on his injury-riddled career at Michigan. 
Great work by Eric Monroe there converging. And that ball just a little bit off the mark, and Ellinger knows it's low and away just behind him, and he wished he had it back the minute he threw it. Again, it looked like his technique was fine. He just was off the mark. Spencer, I think that's re really been the only critique I could ever have of Sam at times, and I think it's a byproduct of his being too excited. It affects his accuracy on occasion. Third and six. This is a blitz here. Well read by Sam. That one's incomplete. Brewer had it, lost it. They're going to rule it incomplete. Leggett popped him, and the ball came free. Excellent coverage by Leggett. I mean, he's been playing in that safety position for much of the day, having to play run force, but here he's locked up in man coverage. Does a nice job on the big tight end, getting his right hand in there and dislodging that ball. That's some fine football right there now. Buczewski will come in to boot it away with Adrian Fry back deep. Only punted a couple of times against UTEP, getting a little bit more of a workout today. He had an injured shoulder last year, missed four games. Happened against TCU. It's a little running start and angling this, and it's a fair catch. It's called by Fry. Leggett with the big play defensively. A young man from Navarre, Florida, ready to tangle here in the second. <laughs> Fox Football is sponsored by AT&T SG. Matt Wells told us when we spoke yesterday, Spencer, when you always ask, write the script, right? Mm -hmm. What has to happen? Well, two out of the three, he's winning, and he just got a turnover for a touchdown. That's it, and they get 75% of the time when they're in the red area, they're scoring three for four for 21 points. That's a formula for winning. And again, if you're a coach that has your hands on all parts, three phases of the game, I'm telling you, those matter. And it, it could spell the difference between victory and defeat in a contest like this. It's been impressive to watch him uh, work this team. I mean, this despite the fact that there's almost still to this point, Tim, a two to one advantage in terms of time of possession. It's almost a moot point. So Roderick Thompson in the backfield. As they begin play on the 19 yard line and he struggles to get to the 22, maybe the 23. Nothing easy inside to Quan Graham making the tackle. He's really excited about this new position that he's got, put his hand down on the ground and try to develop a pass rush. That's what's been missing in this defense of Texas in recent years. We've seen some backside pressure already in this game and we've got an injured Red Raider, it appears. That's Weston Wright, number 70, resting his way to the sideline. He got tweaked on that last play. And to your point about Chris Ash, he, he feels comfortable and confident in what they have from an athletic standpoint. And in fact, I think we both agree from looking at tape that this is a more athletic back end. It is, um, yeah. Overall, I think they're excited to watch. Second and six. Out of the shotgun. Bootleg action for Bowman. Air mounted incomplete. Intended for Rigdon 86. That one was airmail just a bit. Well, they took Travis Kuntz, uh, the tight end underneath where he wanted to go. You can see him moving. Watch the tight end come across the formation. He's the shallowest. They're working what we call a levels concept here. And he goes to that third level. Almost got the thing picked off. Yeah, Jalen Green almost had that one. It was thrown behind the receiver. Bowman's had his moments, but he has not protected the ball to the liking of his offensive coordinator. He showed on what could have been a short oh, touchdown yeah. earlier. David Yost has worked with some of the best, the new OC here. At Texas he comes all out blitz. Yep. Up the middle. That pass overthrown. Incomplete. Fans want a flag. They're not going to get one. Yeah. That's Caden. Vasher with Caden Stearns all over him. Yeah, Caden Stearns is playing that free safety position. You can see he's a little bit aggressive, but he stands over, gets a chuck to get help on the back end, and he's uncovered. Oh, Spencer. Oh. That that's that's a that's 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 a miss. He had him wrapped up. He had his arms all around him. Well, Bowman certainly thought he did. I mean, they're, they're, you know, sometimes you can miss them, but I don't know how you miss that one. Austin McNamara will boot it away. Deshaun Jamison is back deep. Here comes the punt there rush. There it is in the air. Schooler going after it. It's picked out of the air. 
at the one yard line and in for the score. That's Jade Barron, number 23. Schooler had a chance at it. The ball then bounced and was picked out of the air. It might, I thought it was Barron in real time. It was blocked by Tyler Owens, 44. Well, Owens is coming off the edge, Tim, and he, he touches this ball off the foot. A lot of times you'll see guys who put their hands and their cape on and they'll dive real high. Well, if you want to reduce the margin of the ball being missed, you put your hand off the foot. Did an excellent job of finding kind of a mid-range area there to find it and get the block. Well, Excellent performance. The freshman from Pflugerville, Texas, uh -huh. Jade Barron takes away a big one. Prepped at uh, Connolly High School there. Not too far from Austin. And again, the block. A beautiful one by Tyler Owens, number 44. Oh, those special teams. Texas now getting into the act. A return to Cinder here in Lubbock. Fox College Football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, and motorcycle insurance. Back to that dirt down play, Spencer. I mean, this is just an obvious miss of pass interference on Stearns, number seven. Well, I'll tell you, he was all over him. I mean, like a ham sandwich, man. He was just an opportunity to call that one should have been there. He's wrapped, got himself draped around his hip, line over the top. I mean, I mean I, he could have been called twice. Yeah, uh, you can't miss that. I mean, that is just a, and we don't care who wins this game. Have no, no cares whatsoever. But that miss then led to the blocked punt for a touchdown. That is a big missed call in this game. Got a touchback, he'll bring it out to the 25 yard line. But, but give it to Texas, though, Spencer, for saying, you know what, if, if Texas Tech can block a punt, so can we. Well, they're coming after it. I mean, it, sometimes you have to manufacture wins. And listen, everybody, it's cliche, everybody talks about the three phases. But man, today, with the landscape of college football being what it is for the second week, in as many weeks, we've seen major upsets, formerly number three ranked Oklahoma. Every phase of the game is going to determine the outcome. I mean, it's just college football is flat, man. I'm beginning to wonder, too, uh, Spencer, if the lack of yards on the ground for Texas Tech is beginning to bother Bowman a little, that quarterback, there's a little quick look in on the curl to Miles Price. He's well, accustomed can, to having Sir Roderick uh, having a big day. Well, I can tell you, it definitely is emboldened Chris Ash because when you know you, up until the last series, you only had eight yards rushing on the ground. I'm pinning my ears back coming after you if I see that. And they're just uh, on second and short. I don't know that he made it. It'll be very, very close. They'll move the chains. Alfred Collins, 95, making the tackle. So they do get a first down without throwing the football. That's a first today. Out of the shotgun with the ball at the 35. And again, Texas Tech trailing by 10. It's almost like they're slowing the pace now. now Oh, he is, but, but the Texas defenders are three yards deep into the backfield as a flag comes down. Maybe Osai with a, may have been a face mask against Texas. Let's take a look. They'll sort that out, but just watch the move here. Uh, 93, that's uh, Sweat, of Andre Sweat, number 93, I think may have gotten some face mask. See if that's the call. Personal foul. Face mask, 93, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, yes. automatic, first down. Our spotter extraordinaire, Brett Bender, on top of it. Devondre, <laughs> Devondre got to be more like teeth sweat on that play. <laughs> A little bit more smooth, brother. And our content coordinator, Scott Alexander, also with us today. 38 to 28 our score don't forget next saturday this same red raiders will be taking on a hot kansas state team on fs1 so roderick you can see how he put that left foot in the ground spencer and then cut against the grain big, so, big he, move he's a whirling dervish you know he kind of reminds me of this spin move right here you know chuba hubbard does a fantastic job of running inside the tackle for a long rangy guy that's who he reminds me of after a gain of five, Bowman's pass is oh, caught, beautiful. snared by Price. Miles Price is inside the 20. How about Price settling this one down off, off coverage? He's not going to try to push it. He sees exactly what's up, 
and he knows that underneath route is his, and he just does a nice job of hauling it in and going getting extra yardage after making the play. Well, you know, Spencer, uh, we've got a whistle and a flag. Team offense, oh, out wow. of bounds on his own, came back and was the first to touch the forward pass. Lost it down, wow. previous spot, third down. That's a big one against Texas Tech after what had been an explosive play by the Red Raiders, and that'll set them back. Let's take a look at the all 22 here. The lower part of your screen, you can see he goes out of bounds apparently after the All catch. Right. That foot. Boy, that. that's close on a heel, if know. anything. Boy, that was close. That was a tic tac play anyway. Yeah, especially with it being his heel that was noticed. I was looking for something a lot more <laughs> obvious than that. Good call, though. Lost it down the big key. Third and five. Saratrick. He's ahead for a first down. That was key to maintain possession of the ball and maintain contact with the Longhorns. So Roger showed great patience in that hold, a little stutter step. And, you know, usually coaches get on players for stutter stepping, but when you're trying to time it up with the line, the splits that this line takes, I think it's, it's warranted sometimes. See those sets on those right side of that line. They always telegraph what they're going to do. Their, their hind parts are... Watch the right side of this line. Too. Watch this tackle. Mm -hmm. Got a tackle eligible. Oh! Roderick in trouble again as Osai gets great penetration again. Yeah. A lot of times when you see them off the ball, there is some kind of trick play or they're trying to invite the upfield rusher to come upfield. Inside zone read. Ball, make it back to the other side. Townsend has come into the game in the backfield now. So there is Townsend number five. Rigdon likes to run those shallow crosses and slant patterns, moves into the slot up at the top of your screen. Quick curl to the outside to Ezekama. And he's wrestled down at the 35-yard line. I will say this for David Gillis, it's paying off. I mean, they've really shot themselves in the foot, but the, taking his time, he's getting into the right play. And we talked yesterday about having a series of plays that his quarterback can call. A lot will work. He's not a Absolutely. Texas almost in prevent look here. That's Travis Coons, the senior from Austin Town, Ohio. They want to get about 50 to 60 snaps out of him. They'll use Holcomb and Killian also at tight end. And again underneath. That's, a, as you said, pitch and catch. Eric Azukama, who made that really acrobatic touchdown catch in man coverage in the first half. Yeah, see, I would be shocked to me if, if they come back and look. But watch number nine, Josh Thompson, after he gets nailed and gets injured on his play. I would come right back to that left side because he just left the game. Yeah, they're, they're getting big men up front, getting right. fresh bodies, but number nine is the one that's not in the game. They, they need to attack that edge right now. Keep the motion weak. Uh, trips to the top of your screen. It's Townsend. Chedarius with a marker down. Thrown in an area where you may think crack back block of some kind. Foster 25 with a stop. Yeah, could be a hold, could be a crack back too. As he was trying to get to the edge. And we've got an injured Longhorn. That's uh, Keandre Coburn, 99. All 6'2", 348 pounds of him. Offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That's Still Ethan. Second down. That's Ethan Card. 74's got a, f a handful of jerseys yeah. there too for our, but they got uh, the big fella, Ethan Card, the left tackle on the pull down. So they'll take some time to deal with Coburn, and he is a load. 7.36 remaining here in the third. Texas Tech trying to answer the Longhorns' lead. Big fella played at uh, Westfield High, Houston, Texas. This is a guy that uh, is nimble for his size. We'll 
I think that's a delicate way of saying it. Yeah, he's got a little dancing bear in it. Yes, he he's, does. He's got some quick feet. I think they knew with all of this size up front that they were going to have to use just about everybody on their depth chart through the course of this game, especially the temperatures now have moved up to 99 degrees. Now, it's a dry heat in this part of northwest Texas. Bowman in this drive is four out of four, dinking and dunking, Spencer, most, most of the time. Well, I credit that with David Yost's offensive coordinator. He's kind of taking his time, slowed the game down, taking advantage of that off coverage, which they're still in. On second and seven, Darius Townsend tripped up by Osai. Negligible game. Give him a yard, and it's third down and six. So Dr. Thompson back in the game. It's like we've got man coverage up at the top of your screen, Spence. Yeah, they've got a lot of grass up there. What the key is, if you're going to go there, you've got to watch that safety. If he's on the hash or further, you want to stay away from that. Because remember, the ball moves faster than the body, but that's a short distance for him to cover. So Dr. they were ready for that. No question about it. That's Jawan Mitchell, the first to meet him, number six. You're looking for the numbers match up in the paint, guys. And if there's more bodies over there to that side, you know, you're not going to have great success. Again, they ran into an overload to that side. There's too many white and orange bodies on that side. Well, Wolf, 20 of 22 in 2019. A career long of 45 against Texas El Paso. This one will be 46 yards. Snap, spot, and it's wide right. So a lost opportunity for Texas Tech there. Just outside his longest, and it was Harris. We'll be back. Well, millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports has teamed up with Good Sports to restore play for kids and the community organizations that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Visit GoodSports.org to learn more. Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. Texas with a 10-point lead. Just under six remaining in the third quarter. They take over here at their 27, and we've got a pre-snap flag. Looks like it's a ball start for 52 offense five yard penalty still first down. Yep, looked like it was Cosme. It was a really highly regarded left tackle. That's a rare penalty you're going to see on him. He's a smart kid, very athletic, tough. John Robinson, the celebrated freshman in the backfield now. Will Ellinger. Yeah, look at those check downs. He goes right to Robinson, who floods the zone. Down he goes, ball's loose. Ball is loose. Back to the 26-yard line as he was hit by Morgan Stern, number 41. He tried to go above him. Well, you go airborne, boy, you better make sure that you got that ball seated properly. Again, that ball, it's almost natural, Tim, oh, to take your boy. arm and extend it away from your body to cushion your fall. But watch what happens here. Oh. Ball almost comes out, man. That, that just looks nasty. I don't know how it looked he like was he's able to. In a circus, I don't man. know how he was able to pop up that quickly. That back went all the way back and pulled it up. He sure did. Second and four. Roshan Johnson this time ahead for a first down out to the 44-yard line. And Boyer Randall with the stop. Texas Tech defensively in a pinch right here. Texas looks to open this thing up. If they can get a touchdown, their flags are all over the place as Ellinger Sam hits the turf the at the 49-yard line. We'll check the markers. Yeah, they'll sort it out. We're able to explore. Texas is the three-man front. There are gaping holes up there over those guards just to the left of either side. Ellinger taking advantage of that. Holding number 68. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Derek Kerstetter. That's... Uh, Kerstetter, who's uh, had some trouble with some snaps today, highly 
thought of as we mentioned. Yeah, he's all over this team. Yeah, he's all over Nick McCann on that play. You can see him holding McCann's trying to get away from him. Kersetter's got that left hand on the numbers and bunched it up and just pulled him toward him. Roshan Johnson remains in the backfield. And the line to make now all the way to the 47 of Texas Tech. So first down at 19. Option towards the boundary. Well diagnosed by Morgan Stern again. 41, the Duke transfer out well, of uh, LaGrange, New York. This play didn't work for a couple of reasons. The mesh point, again, it was not, it was a cursory. It was not a legitimate mesh point. So the defensive end didn't really have to honor the quarterback. And so now you are immediately at a numbers disadvantage. The best way the option worked is if you sell it. When you ride and mesh that point, you got to make that defensive end commit to you. Second down, 21. Texas now back to their 32-yard line. Set up. A screen and a double, double screen. screen. Wow. It's knocked away. That ball is live. Eli Howard almost had it. Yeah. An interception there. That ball was deflected. <laughs> and I thought it was thrown behind Ellinger. And for a moment, Spencer, I thought that thing was absolutely live. Take a look. Mike Yersich going to the crazy book here, man. Yeah. That, that, that's a gamble there. But watch 53, Eli Howard on the double throwback. He's standing right between yeah. him. He almost has that thing, yeah, man. Yeah, he did. He deflected it. The, you noticed Ellinger, he wasn't sure if the ball was, was not live because it may have been thrown behind him, but it was broken up beautifully, as you mentioned. Well, that was a, a major gamble right Ooh. there, backed up in your own territory. Was now. it ever. Third down, 21. Johnson, the setback. And we've got a timeout taken by Texas. Timeout, Texas, first of the half. When we talk about the great schemer that is Juricic, having spent some time with Mike Gundy, Spence, he decided to pull a little rabbit out of a hat here on the All-22. Well, you can see the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. It's live, but the double throwback almost inadvertently intercepted by Eli Howard. When you gamble like that, my friend, you better make sure you gamble good. Three fifty-four remaining after a timeout now. Third down, 21. The Longhorns have gone backwards. So it's gaining possession after the Texas Tech missed field goal. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Ellinger. Looping it long for more. Incomplete. There were three Red Raiders there. As Moore hung on, McPherson tipped it away. Number eight for Texas Tech, and Moore a little slow to get up. Yeah, I understand the idea of taking a shot. There were so many bodies back there. Adrian Fryer, number seven, the deepest among them at corner, backpedaling, almost comes up with that one. Again, they had a shot, too. Those three red shirts over there, Melinger. Now, he's taking a shot to kind of loosen them up a little bit, but uh, that was another gamble. On this series, there's been some interesting calls by Mike Gerson. We'll see. Uh, Touched on Moore, slow to get up. He's slow to get to the sidelines now, it appears. Timmy projecting forward as we sort out this situation with the down Longhorn. It really comes down to a stat that we don't talk about a whole lot these days, but points per possession. Yeah. 2.33 yeah. points per possession for Texas Tech. And that it's a problem because they are at a disadvantage in the time of possession. Mm -hmm. So if they continue to average what they've been averaged, they've got to possess the ball too many times. They're going to run out of clock to have a chance to get back in this game. Good to see Moore up and making his way back to the sidelines under most of his own power. Youngster out of Yoakum High School in Yoakum, Texas. Missed the entire 2019 season. Had some uh, problems with the law and then shoulder injury back in 2018 has made his way back and they love him on those quick slants. He's got excellent speed. I know he's happy to be playing football again. Adrian Fry awaits the Longhorn punt. Fry with a fair catch. Cradles it at the 32. Tomorrow, a huge doubleheader on Fox. First, the Bears and Falcons, other regional action. And Dak and Zeke will lead the Cowboys and the Seahawks. As Russell Wilson awaits in America's Team of the Week, check local listings for the games in your area or watch it on Fox, the Fox Sports app. Boy, Russell Wilson having a whale of a year. And how about that comeback that oh. that Prescott and company had I never just seen a week like ago? That, man. Boy, <laughs> that'll get you an apple in a roadmap if you're a coach. <laughs> you let that happen. Not, not knowing the rules of an onside kick, right? 
Atlanta still uh, trying to figure that one out. So Roderick Thompson stopped by DeAndre Coburn, who we're happy to report is back in the game. He had left earlier with an injury. Big fella got him some fuel over there and walked it <laughs> off. <laughs> some fluids. Some fluids, baby. <laughs> Second down and eight. Deshaun Carter, we've not called his number of late, Spencer. He and Basher, you would think, as a comma's been more, really more active in this game than Basher has been, which is uh, unusual. Pressure, set up the screen. Texas has it well diagnosed. Just tremendous work by the Longhorn defensive forward wall. That's Taquan Graham, his speed, a factor there, number 49. And now you see Moore making his way to the locker room for the Horns. So third and 16, Texas Tech. Like the Longhorns, they've moved backwards on this series. Really interesting what David Yotes is doing. These last two series, he's been deliberate, trying to get in the right play. I understand it, but it works when you're scoring. It steals possession, time away from Texas, but if you're not moving the ball, you're not scoring. It's kind of like going the opposite of pace of tempo. Pressure again off the edge. This one is thrown. Basher's got it. Well, we mentioned we had not called his name. That time, Spencer, the needle threaded. Well, off of Josh Thompson, and I think that's why they're going to him. Josh went out on the previous series, and he was limping a bit. And out of that break, you see how much coverage he gave, as much as five yards as they're going fast. Swing it out to Kishan Carter. And we're going to get a late, did we get a late flag? I think we did. Right at the Tech sidelines. Not a wise choice by the Longhorns there. A little extracurricular activity going on there on the on the home team sideline. Not good. Well, he was already out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Scott Campbell will have the call. Big swole. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 11, 15 yard penalty, another run, automatic, first down. Anthony Cook, the guilty party here, the junior out of Lamar High, Houston, Texas. Yeah, B.J. Foster's back there too, and you can see him. But Cook, you're right, he got the hand on the face mask, and then the push, well, the late, well out of bounds. Yeah, I thought the late push was uh, what they were going to catch, but yeah, they definitely had face mask prior to that. So Darius Townsend is in. New center for Texas Tech. This pass is caught. Quick curl to Keyshawn Carter again. And, uh, he spun down at the 29 yard line. And Anthony Cook, great job of getting there on the point. But again, just pitching and catching right here. And I, I like the philosophy if you're scoring. If you're able to convert, convert points, like anything, you're keeping that Texas offense off the field. Well, you're right. They have used all of the play clock in each of their last two series. Now, last time, they missed a 46-yard field goal, got no points out of it. And uh, even at this stage, probably looking to give their defense a little bit of a break. Not, a, they? not a big fan of trips in the boundaries down here. To the play side. Got to go away. There you go. There's a oh, mix-up. Mix up. Oh. Yeah. Huge oh. mix-up on that route that time. Trey Cleveland just broke it off, and uh, Bowman had post corner in mind. Well, you got what you wanted with trips to the boundary, and again, a bail technique. He's playing inside and out, and he's running with you. A nice little push off. He, he reads it as an out cut, yep. and that's the way I think Bowman needed to read that play as well. With the big distance, the gap in coverage, playing a bail technique, he was in position to play the deep pass. Third down and seven. Again. It's the slant, it's Vasher, and look out, T.J. T.D. Jalen Green with envy on this play. Watch it, Timmy. It's a quick inside route. He looks in quickly. Anytime you're man-to-man -man on a slant route, boy, it's tough because matched up in man coverage, each one reaches one, and if you can't get your guy, you're going to be on the short end. That's a nice job of running after the catch. I'm going to go really old school on you there with that move. <laughs> uh, How about Carmichael of Eagles ooh, fan? Eagles fan. Does that's that take great. you back? Does that's, that? I mean, TJ's a physical wide receiver. That's going back to old Herm Edwards yeah. era. 
He's a lot faster than Carmichael. Yeah. But boy, is he physical. He is lanky like him. Yeah. Looks like him. Physically Look, carry himself like him. Here's the conversion on third down to Vasher. And he had not been targeted. It was almost as if they were waiting to set up T.J. Vasher all along. Yeah, I'm just looking and so impressed at how they handled these balls. That other one was high. The one prior to that, then Vasser on the slant just put it was put on his numbers, and he went in and scored. But these receivers are so impressive with their hands and coordinating the catches. It, it just, it's unbelievable to watch these guys execute. Spencer, we were talking to Chris Ash. Yeah, there's absolutely no doubt. Urban Myers, correct. Long haul. This is a wonderful defensive coordinator that Texas has hired. He taught Urban and his team the, the rugby style of tackling, some things that need to change. He's installing a four-down alignment. This is, though, a defense that's in transition. And what Texas Tech has been able to dial up is their physical wide receivers can outduel a shorter secondary that's six feet at best. That's right. And again, we saw it a couple of years ago when, when you had the, the long guys, of Devin Duvernay. I'm talking about on the opposite side of the ball, guys like Colin Johnson, who was 6'6", big body guys, and we saw them do that to Texas Tech. Now, Texas Tech is doing the same thing to them with shorter defenders from Texas Longhorns, these longer, able-bodied guys from Texas Tech are doing a number today. So a three-point game, and we have a touchback. Longhorns will bring it out for first down. It's that uh, size that we were discussing we can illustrate here. And a young man from Wichita Falls, Texas, is long and lean. You're talking giving up six inches there. And, and again, most of that, you know, guys, proportionality is key, too. Look how long his arms are. Yep. I mean, he's tall, yes, but his arms relative to this. This guy can lean sideways and scratch his kneecaps, man. He's got those long <laughs> arms. And, yeah. he, and that, that creates distance for a short uh, arm uh, cornerback. By the way, no breaks for Vasher, right? He's, nope. he's on the kickoff team, too. Mm -hmm. And Matt Wells talked about that. Here's Ellinger, comfortable in the pocket, but unloads it to his receiver underneath, Kai Money, and he is Adrian fires blown up. Oh, boy, that was a big hit by Merriweather and Fry. Look at that. <laughs> Merriweather comes flying up there again, and just they're just so quick to the ball. Short game. Here's Ellinger. Loading up and going deep. Incomplete. Eagles had it and then lost it. Well defended by McPherson, but I thought he had this one in his sights. Yeah, McPherson off coverage, and he was playing a similar bail technique. Gets his hips turned around and then actually does an excellent job of trying to yep. locate the ball again. And if you're an official, you want to call that play. You're tempted to do it until you see how eloquently i'm going to call it eloquently because to me i've not seen a young corner turn and identify the ball like that in the sun and still compete for the catch all right I'm outstanding gonna wait here it looks like um see the numbers on third down this uh, partisan crowd of red raider fans on their feet sensing a three and out low snap to ellinger and we've got a flag down looks like a timeout prior to the flag taken by texas timeout Texas. We're going to have 30 seconds in length. 13 ticks remaining in the third. We'll be right back. This is an excellent job of Zeke McPherson with the bail technique. Bail basically means when I see it, I'm going to turn my hips and start running. I'm not going to get beat deep. His eyes are peeking back inside the quarterback. Sam gives him that double hitch. That's the reason why he came up short on the coverage. But he was able to recover, re-identify where the ball was, and to finish the play. That's a fine piece of defensive work right there. That's, that's next level stuff, folks. Third down seven. Ellinger flushed. Let's it fly. Whoa, it's picked doctor. off down the sidelines. It's Hogan inside the 10 at the 9. Here's you see pressure coming off the edge there. And again, underneath, and Hogan comes driving on this ball. Even though he slipped him, he came out of that one looking like, here's one from you, Steve Atwater, the 27. <laughs> comes out of that thing with his head bent down. I'm going back to old Southwest Conference Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a Razorback. Yeah, that's right. Out. That's Steve right. Atwater later went on to the 
great career and winning a Super Bowl appearance with Denver. So Roderick Thompson on what will be the final play of the third quarter in the backfield with Bowman. He'll take it to the edge. Look out! Touchdown! Texas Tech! Timmy, this is a work of art right here. You got them on their heels. Now just to sweep, to stretch the edges there. And, oh, got away from a little hole and call on that edge there. But the big right, Western right to the oh, left guard. Boy. Got a little bit of jersey there, but yep. they got by without it and got in the end zone. I don't know if he didn't. I don't know if he didn't get out of bounds at the two either. <laughs> he might want to take a look at this. I thought he may have stepped out back at the two, and they're going to look at it. Watch the feet, Spencer. I thought the last angle was actually better. Yeah, well, I think the bounds. left one is out. Yeah, yeah. he's out. But you're right about Weston Wright. He got away with a hold. And it was um, it was one of those that could if you if you did it at a dance, you, you might you might be sitting out the next opportunity. It was, it was, a, was a big time. It hold. was a Texas two step. Yeah, yeah. Was. Was... <laughs> so they will uh, they will I thought the line judge saw that clearly. He was sitting there right, right on top yeah, of it. Yeah. I mean that's that should have been the call in the field, actually. I mean, look where the line judge is to the left. You yeah. see, he's looking right at his feet. Oh. Right. Right. Well, we've seen some calls that have been difficult today. One went, went Texas's way early. I think this one went Texas Tech's way without question. First, the miss on the hold, overshone right there, and then not seeing the fact that uh, Sir Roderick did step out of the two yard line. Dean is back in our studios in Los Angeles. Yeah, so they're looking at the left foot at the two-yard line. I agree with you guys. To me, the foot is out. Bring this back. Make it second and goal. The, the quarter had ended, so there's no clock reset. We would just start the fourth quarter there at the two-yard line. Okay. Hey, uh, Dean, while we have you, I'd like to go back um, as it relates to the circumstances of, you know, when you're an official and, and you're in a position to reset a situation after a miss and I, I know that everyone's human but I'm just curious what's going through the minds of of everyone though the replay official everyone are they thinking more about where to reset the ball more often times than not after yeah review, that's part of it the ruling on the field stands touchdown wow. I, I mean wow how does that happen Ooh, I mean I just I, <laughs> I don't know how that one happens Dino really don't yeah, I mean, they must have felt that they didn't have the right angle down the line. It certainly looked like the foot was out of bounds. Um, but again, as to your earlier question, when you are looking at a play like this, if you're going to overturn it, you got to figure out all that administrative information. You know, the down, the distance, the yard line, the, the clock. So that's all part of that process. Yep. What a huge break for Texas Tech. Thank you, Dino. And Timmy, that satisfies or at least addresses that time of possession conundrum it does. Yep. they've had. Critical extra point to make it a four-point game for Wolf. Oh, the Eagles had many a hit record. All those lion eyes. <laughs> Texas Tech leads. Woo. It's Fox College Football. It's powered by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Jones, AT&T Stadium, you look at the score by quarter. Spencer, you kind of got a feeling through much of this game, Texas Tech was trying to hang on, fight from behind, but now a 21-point third quarter has given them the lead, and they actually toned down the speed of their game. Yeah, we talked about what David Yost's strategy was by slowing it down. But what they've done is effectively flipped the script in this third quarter. It's almost a three to one time of possession advantage in Texas Tech's favor. 10 minutes and 59 seconds to 401. Well, they squib this one and the line driver is fielded at the 27 yard line by the Longhorns. That's Jared Wiley, the backup tight end. And you look at the numbers on Ellinger, the second half not nearly as productive. Mm -hmm. Again, you just got to credit the defensive adjustments that were made and then also the time of possession, being able to possess the ball. David Yotes slowing things down a little bit. Points per possession becoming a premium strategy as opposed to taking shots, leaving time on the clock to allow an offense that has kind of gassed you a little bit to come back 
and compete. I think it's a great strategy. Ingram is the setback out of the shotgun, and they go with two by two wide receiver set. And it's Ingram. He pops it free. Look at him go. Pass midfield into Texas Tech territory at the 47. Morgan Stern holds him down. For the left side of this line, Aguilar, Kirk Stetter, and company do a nice job of pushing everything down. And then, of course, Sam Cosme, Samuel Cosme did a fantastic, fantastic job of allowing that guy who's shown so much aggression to come in. Almost lived in the backfield, but that overaggression actually cost him. Outstanding job of execution up front. Washington gets that one out to the 40-yard line. So, again, a great gain on first down. Second and three coming up after a pickup of seven by Marcus Washington. Deontay Ingram stays in the game at running back. Four wide now. Ingram bounces it outside. He can do that, too, with the best of them. He's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. McPherson, number eight. Penn State transfer, making the tackle. You see Texas come out in those four-wide concept trips now to the short side of the field. Let's see if they try to get an isolation back opposite. Quick snap again. Ellinger yep. with a pump fake and a beauty. Going, going for the corner. He's got Washington, and it's incomplete. Boy, Washington had two steps. I mean two steps on his defender. So they set it up nicely, trying to come back again. Off coverage here with Hogan, the cornerback, and, and he gets turned around. Oh. Hogan is absolutely beat. If you put a little bit more on that ball, it's a sure touchdown. You know, I can talk about I'm not a big fan of trips to the boundary. When you get isolation and there's no adjustment or safety, you got to go for it. Take a shot. Ellinger did. Second and ten. Little quarterback draw maneuver on his part. And he gets it down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. He'll, have, he'll need three on third down coming up. Excellent job by Nick McCann, you know, with the nose tackle. A lot of times those guys don't figure into tackles and plays, but a nice job of disengaging and making a tackle on Ellinger. They'll call it third and four. The game was six. Tight end, Kate Brewer. It's Roshan Johnson this time. I think he's short. Nick McCain, 98, met him there. That's a full yard shy of the first down. Yeah, I think Nick may be down too, Tim. He's uh, he actually a couple of Red Raiders that are down. Collided with one another. So Nick McCann, number 98, is one of them. Just watch those guys down with their hands down. And Nick does a fantastic job of taking on that slam block and then just mm -hmm. making a great play in space. But, boy, he paid a price for it, got kicked there. He and Jeffers collaborated. And McCann, who was on the ground earlier, is yet again. An interesting fourth and one call coming up. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Light. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. And by Rocket Mortgage for the personalized playbook on home loans, Rocket Can. Uh, look at this third quarter comeback for Tech. It's been amazing. 21 points scored in this quarter, taking advantage of some turnovers, slowing the game down. Spencer, I think this is a very important decision for Tom Herman. You got the best kicker in the country, arguably. You want to make it a one-score game? You got a chance to make it a one-score yeah. game. Yeah. They're going to dismiss that and go for it here on fourth and a legitimate one. Roshan Johnson is the setback. They go power. He's uh, in trouble. He's in trouble. Uh, he got Extra it. He got effort it. and a push. Wow, how about that? Got him the first down. Well, that's a rugby push. Yes, yeah, that ever. was the bush push in action. Reggie was awake, by the way, when he was uh, pushing Matt Liner Singer. back in the back in the day. The watch they, they had him stoned here, Spencer. Yeah, they did. But that late push. Got him the first down. Johnson again weaving his way through the Red Raider attack. And he's down to the five. Leggett with the saving tackle. Look at Roshan rerouting. Watch this. He's going to turn that hand and come back the opposite direction. Excellent job of navigating the tight space. First and goal. And Texas Tech diagnosis display quickly Johnson stopped in his tracks Christian Merriweather's just been everywhere today 
know, give him credit. Both teams, Tim, has done a nice job of stopping the run. I think the 26-yard run that uh, Ingram had was the longest yep. of any back today. Yeah, Tech has improved in that area since the early going of the game. Second and goal from the 10. Uh, I like a switch concept. This is a good throw right here. Can come back. Yeah. Swing it out. That's Joshua Moore. He had, he had the swap receiver money in front of him, but it was well diagnosed yeah, Jeffers by Morgan Stern. Yeah, but Je Morgan Stern was out there too, and it ended up with Rico Jeffers out there as well from that Sam position. The outside linebacker playing sideline to sideline. That's what you like to out of that position. Reduced capacity here at Jones AT&T Stadium. They're noisy though, man. Yeah, they can be heard right now. Ingram the setback. Spooner in the slot. Ellinger flushed. Look out. It is incomplete. Outstanding defensive work. More the intended receiver. Leggett was over there 16 to make the play. Tim, this is a coverage incompletion here. Almost had like a teacup, tight alignment. Schooler trying to make his way upfield on what is a swing route or a shoot route. He's trying to stay open, running out of real estate, doing all he can to get open. The opposite side of play, nothing there. Coverage all the way around. That was fire on that particular side. So whether you're going right or left, and then the constant pursuit by the nose tackle up front had Ellinger running for his life. Excellent coverage. This will be 26 yards for Dicker the kicker. And it is a one score game. First one to 50? There you go. I like it. Gotta get a 50 spot to win this thing? Yes, sir. <laughs> Forty-two to forty-one, and if you add it up, we're getting close to one hundred points in this game, Spencer. But I can guarantee you, we did get to one hundred degrees here in Lubbock. Uh -huh. Yes, as I believe the old Astros announcer Milo Hamilton once said, "You know, it's hotter than a deep post stove uh -huh. or a hot post stove, <laughs> one or the other." And you nailed it. It's pretty it. hot. <laughs> that kick goes through the end zone for a touchback. <laughs> and that might, well, it's baseball season. Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd give Milo yeah. a little yeah. love. Yeah, look at the comparison. Spencer, you said to our production team, Eric Mandia, Jeremy Green down in the truck yesterday, he said, Bowman's got to go toe to toe with Ellinger, and he's done that and more so far. Well, we know he's capable of putting up big numbers, and we, we alluded to earlier in his freshman year when he went for 605 against Houston, as a matter of fact, and uh, broke a record that stood for. Long time, Patrick Mahomes owned it like going 554 or something like that. So the guy's capable of it. Despite not having a perfect game today, he's been able to stand toe to toe with a guy who's probably maybe third in the, if you were a first to oh, yeah. create a Heisman field right now. At, at quarterback, he's yeah. got to be right behind Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence coming into the season. That pass incomplete for Sir Roderick, who's been uh, much more a part of the Texas Tech weaponry in the second half. And to your point, David Yost, who has handled some great quarterbacks in his day, Brad Smith, Chase Daniel, Blaine Gabbert. At Oregon, he had Justin Herbert, and then at Utah State, Jordan Love, doing a nice job here. That pass is tipped into the air and incomplete. A lot of traffic there. Intended for Dalton Rigdon at 86 of the Red Raiders. It'll be third down and 10. And this is the issue you run into here if you can't get your running game going. Could be a quick three and out and uh, time to punt right back to the horns. Pasher down at the bottom of your screen. Matching up against Jalen Green, 6'1 junior, number three. And in that last productive drive, it was all TJ. And brought Coots on the tight end on the other side, got him split in the zone. Third and ten. Nice job. Well, they whipped the Pasher, he couldn't bring it in. They had it set up, didn't they? They did, they really did. I think he wanted to run before he caught it. Again, this is Coots number 15 in that inside slot position. He goes by and draws attention away. But again, Jalen Green is there waiting for him, squatting on him. You just got to have more patience. T.J. Vassar's got to haul that in. We've seen him do it before. Just bad execution on his part. Yeah, those linemen were ready to provide a convoy for him. 
Weston Wright and uh, Ethan Card. McNamara will boot it away. Sean Jamison, who had a muff turn into a fumble putt for a touchdown for Texas Tech. Let's see how he handles this. He'll call everyone off with the fair catch, and it gets a Texas Tech roll. Down at the 28-yard line, Horns will have it. Down one. Bowman, a little bummed after that series. TJ said, ah, that one's on me now. That's on me. Moment of protection brought to you by Allstate. Get a quote today. And special teams have protected and had Texas Tech's back most of the day, Spencer. Timmy, you can do so many things. You can control field position, ignite big plays, and then, of course, establish momentum throughout the course of the game. Field position oftentimes is determined. And we talk about all the times the three phases of the game that we give short rift yep. to the special teams. I can tell you this Texas Tech team will play their starters. They put value in special teams. On the 28-yard line, first and 10 for the Longhorns. Play fake, and they go to Schooler on the slant. Flag down, Schooler down at the 45. And by the way, Texas, Texas has had its fair share of uh, special team success today as well with a blocked punt for a touchdown as well. So that aspect of the game is huge. Here's the call. Holding, holding, 78. Offense, ten yard penalty on the spot. Denzel Okafor, senior out of Louisville, with the hold. Denzel at that right guard position. You can see him here, 78. He just overreaches. And again, he grabs Eli Howard by the neck. Eli's trying to get away from him, but he can't. Collar the big time. First and 20, Ellinger. Three-man rush, plenty of time. Let's see if he's got the patience. Incomplete. That one hung up in the air a little on him. Now, in a few moments, those of you in some of our home markets from Milwaukee, St. Louis, Philadelphia, and Tampa Bay will be taken at the start of our baseball coverage. Those games are also available, by the way, on FS2 and streaming live on the Fox Sports app. We will get you out there at the immediate conclusion of our game and for those leaving us you can still stream our game on the fox sports app second down and 20. that's brewer the tight end that now moves into the h-back spot johnson the setback yeah of course texas tech was right there they're looking like the longhorns defense in the first half with that penetration, Spencer, into the backfield. Nick McCann again. McCann was there too, but Eli Howard helped turn that thing in as well. What could Eli, he may miss, but then the Calvary is right there behind him. I mean, everybody's coming from all over the place. Even Colin Schooler from the wheel position got in on that. He says, feed me, baby. Feed me, big fella. Third and 22 after the loss of two on that play. It is not really. Oh, they're really missing, aren't they? Whittington mm -hmm. and Jake Smith. At that H spot, the H receiver spot. Three-man rush, Timmy. Games and uh -oh. got it. Look wow. out. Down that's he a, goes. That's a huge win right there. Huge win. Kyrie Wilson, number 19, the transfer from Texas A&M with watch, the big play. Watch him work the game from the outside. The game upfield and the deal. You take my man, I'll take yours, and we'll split the two that try to stop us. That's outstanding strategy. The beautiful thing about that, Jim, it only took three to create that against five guys trying to block. Wonderful execution up front by those three. And now you put your punter in a tough spot. We'll have to get this one off from his end zone, Bochevsky. Great field position. Special teams have been talking about it. Fry is back deep. End over end variety. He brings it in. Drops it. Wow. Down he goes at the 43. That was a precarious situation to be in. Texas Tech's defense does the job. A little game, a little deal, mm, right? Yes, sir. In the center of your screen with those golden locks is uh, David Yost, the second year coordinator here. And he told us, Spencer, that they spent really all of the offseason looking at Chris Ash's defense and felt like they could get to the middle of the field with their taller, more physical receivers, get some one-on-one -on -one shots, and 
you know, that's really been the difference for them offensively. Yeah, they went back as far as the time he spent down by Piscataway at Rutgers yep. and uh, tried to figure out what he did. And they found some tendencies, some things that they like. And I tell you what, his second half strategy of slowing the game down and being judicious with the play selection has actually worked. They flipped the time of possession and uh, put themselves in a good spot. And got more out of Sir Roderick Thompson, if not as a runner, as a pass receiver. Here he is on the quick pitch. Ahead to the 46, it's a negligible game. Nice work by Ojibo to make the, to make the stop. But if you get him in the mix, then that opens up a few more things. Timmy, I would not be in a hurry right now to, to move the ball down the field. And here's why. If you can, you, you've shown that you can flip the time of possession, and they're doing exactly what I would anticipate them to do. Get in the play that's going to work and maximize the opportunity. Burn clock, move the chains. You know what? They're good with a, a five-yard, three-yard game. Yeah, yeah. Second down and eight. Over the middle, quick curl, and it's caught. That's Coons, the tight end. Now they may be short of the line of the game, but that's okay. Because it, now you create a run-pass conflict scenario. You just need a little bit. But if you're on defense, you're saying, okay, what, what are our personnel grouping? We need big fellas in there because they're going to run a run play, or are they going to throw it? You can even take a shot. Third and two. Basher, flank down to the bottom of your screen. Got to be smart about it. It's Josh Thompson, the best corner for Texas. It has him. Number nine. So Roderick has the first down. Inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. I trust Sir Roderick's read on that, but that play was actually designed to come across the formation and attack that bubble on the right side. Having him opposite of where he needs to go it was an intelligent play design. Out pattern. This one's caught. Great. That's just uh, tremendous work by Rigdon. Running that out pattern and a beautiful throw from Alan Bowman. I love it because he's got off coverage. And, and again, I, I'm not quite sure you know, what you're looking at in terms of a cover screen. Uh -oh. Adam Warwick. <laughs> that ball stayed up in the air a while and Rigdon came back to get it. I, it looked like a wounded duck for a while. Texas, they were stunned to see Rigdon come back and bring that one in. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, man. There was pressure. Rolling on the field, a catch. They're gonna review this. There was pressure, which forced this ball to hang up. I don't know if anybody physically got their hand on the ball no. or not. I think Bowman just- He just hung, he had to get it between the defenders. Well, that was a great job of, of dropping it in there, yeah. man. It hung for a while, and some of the Texas defenders were frozen by it. Well, I think that's a catch. That's just like a little nine iron or something, man. You'd be able to drop that thing in there like that or a pitching wedge. You need the uh, Mac Daddy. Mac for Daddy, those. yeah, yeah. 60 degree is a pitch at the angle. Loft, yeah, the yeah. extra, okay. yeah, it's a little Mickelson action. Yeah. Our uh, referee, Scott Campbell, in consultation with Gene Simcoe. to me as though the hands are in fact under it. The other angle where you're looking for the cone, you're looking for the cone of the ball. My guess is that that's going to stand. Dean, what say you? In, in all my years of officiating, I've never heard the cone of the football. So you are coining phrases in officiating. I love it. But we're looking to see if the ball touched the ground before he gained control. Looked like he had his hands underneath. To me, this looks like a catch and you're in the field of stand. By the way, uh, you know, when you're around as long as I've been around, uh, Dean, you try to come up with something new besides nose. You know, I've got a big nose. I didn't want to say nose to the football, so I went with the cone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, i got to believe that that's going to stand. But then again, we saw a Texas Tech runner. We saw Sir Roderick step out of bounds, and mm -hmm. that one was missed. Yeah, stranger things. Yep. Here's the call. After review, ruling on the field stands, first down. And so that sets them up with first down. Good work by Rigdon. And, you know, you look back on the throw, the ball did hang up, but actually it was a perfect pass from Bowman to sandwich it through the zone coverage that Texas had. I'm impressed with this young man, Spencer. Yeah, I really am, too. I mean, it, he was upset that that potentially could have been overruled, but 
Uh, the fact that he was able to get that ball dropped over the head of the linebacker and to drop so quickly, I mean, that's just like a, like a knuckleball, man. It did. It did. First and 10 from the 18-yard line of Texas. Going for the fade in the end zone. Nice. Basher. Wow. Hello. How do you do? Oh, my gosh. Timmy, you set the stage, and we've kind of unpacked it and developed it. These receivers, Basher, here on the latest one, have been the difference. You talk about fingertip catch, bringing them in. I'm telling you, that is just a work of art. And actually had the presence of mind to take that left arm and cushion himself. Yep. This is how you go get it, folks. Sell out. And those mittens on the other end hauls it in. Oh, like a praying mantis, man. Just... Spencer, I thought the catch that he made in Austin two years ago mm -hmm. with one hand. Remember the red glove? Yep, and we, I, I remember. We said hand of Velcro. Mm -hmm. that, that one might even be better than, than, the, one we, than that, the one we called two years ago. That was incredible. It's just been a matchup advantage for Texas Tech, and it's really rearing its ugly head for the Longhorns defensively in the latter stages here. The all-important extra point for Trey Wolf. That makes it an eight-point game. Take us to break, Spencer T. And it's a game of ebb and flow. The flow is flowing for Texas Tech. <laughs> Impressive. Forty-nine, forty-one. T.J. Vasher hmm. with the reception. Five touchdown passes today for Bowman, tying a career high. And uh, this young guy, as we said at the top of the show, Spencer, if he can stay upright, the sophomore from Grapevine, Texas, whose dad was a part of the Penn State 1982 National Championship team, is going to be something special this year in the Big 12. And my dad used to always say, act like you've been there before. That was the kind of aura that he gave in our time with him on the Zoom call yeah. this week. He looked like he'd been there before. And, and in fact, he has. It just hadn't been there as much as a guy that's starting now would have preferred because of injuries, particularly that shoulder that knocked him out of week three. And they go squeeb. And it's picked out of the air by Rashawn Johnson. And, get to the edge. and he's angling for the edge and down at the 35. How long has it been here in Lubbock? We'll go back to Crabtree. Texas is playing for number one in the country, hoping to stay there for their title game. And it's Michael at the edge and into the end zone. And the place went wild. Tip towing it in. And now T.J. Vasher looking for his place in Red Raider lore. Texas, though, with plenty of time. 6.04 remaining, and with Ellinger at the helm, look out. All right, then pressure from Texas Tech. They had that play blown up on a handoff to Ingram in the zone read, Spencer. Yep. And Schooler, the brother of Brendan, Colin Schooler, is the guy that disrupted it. And Tony Bradford, number 97, the junior, the nose tackle, actually got in there as well and was able to even add even more disruption. Just a three-man rush. Ellinger pulls it down. His great judgment. A lot of composure. Colin Schooler with the tackle again. That's a gain of eight. I think third and two. Pardon, I think this three-man rotation up front for this Keith Patterson defense has really helped them out because it's allowed them to drop eight and play coverage. And Sam's had to sort through that, burning up clock. Sometimes he's had errant passes. He's just not been as effective as he needs to be in the lead right now. On third and two, Brendan Schooler flags down. Schooler reaching for the pylon. That's going to be a holding on Texas. Looking for the chains there, and he was a little short. And you're right, preliminary indication would be holding. He was reaching for the chain, and Bradford is down, by the way, 97. We'll check the flag first. We've had some uh, pregnant pauses Personal before the foul. calls. No. Chop block, 78, mm. yeah. 70, offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, still third down. Okafor and Christian Jones, 78 and 70. 
Okafor, Oka you know, you, yeah. when you're engaged, as you see Okafor, number 78, and when you come below the waist, you cannot engage a man who's already engaged with yep. someone. Just can't do it. That that's, sets a guy up for some some of the worst injuries we've seen in the game at any level. By the way, Tony Bradford, one of the really bright young men on this team, wants to grow up and be a police chief. Yeah. Talk so often about social justice, what these young athletes have gone through and the stance that they've had to take. He's got a an even more interesting one. This is huge. Third and 17. Texas with a long way to go here. Three-man rush, stick, dropping eight. Ellinger is in trouble and down. That's crazy, man. Jalen Hutchins on that time, Timmy. And, and here's the incredible thing about it. They were able to create pressure without blitzing. Yep. And as crazy as that look and as populated around the quarterback, it's still just three. And so that means Ellinger has got to sort this out. He's waiting for those crossing defenders, but they are so active in the rotation yep. of Keith Patterson defense is all over it. Eli Howard was there too, Spencer, 53. Mm-hmm. They had a party. They even had help from the secondary yeah. coverage coming up as well. That was well, we said, Eldridge. We said it would be first one to 50. Well, Texas hopes so. They're trailing by eight at 49-41, and Texas Tech takes a timeout. Well, the, the amazing difference in halves in terms of time of possession and the way Texas Tech adjusted their game to what Texas was doing in the first half. I mean, it, it, it literally is a, a script that was flipped, mainly in the third quarter, when they just turned it upside down. It was three to one, essentially, in the first half in favor of Texas in terms of time of possession. And in the third quarter alone, they were pretty much able to erase that. Two key drives that kept the ball away from Texas. Now you gotta think about how in rhythm are we gonna be if you're Texas, when you get the ball back in your hand. You know, and, and obviously you're seeing it right now. They're not executing at a high level. And instead, Texas Tech playing coverage, content to confuse the quarterback, been highly effective at it. Buczewski hit a rocket shot the last time out, a booming punt. He'll need another one here, as Texas Tech looks to have great field position yet again. Adrian Fry is back deep, fourth and 26. And now if you're Yost and, and that brain trust of Red Raider offense, you're thinking tick, 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 right? That's right. A little running boot end over end. Now be careful. Here's Fry down at the 22. Well, baseball's postseason is coming. In just 10 days, FS1 will be your home for the National League Divisional Series. It all gets underway on October 6th. The MLDS on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. And the set partner, another reason to love those Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> Back door for the Astros. 49 points today. That's the most ever in a game against Texas for Texas Tech. So we have seen some history today. We will be left to wonder if it takes 50 to win this one. The Longhorn faithful hope so. Trailing by eight, so they need the ball. A touchdown and a two-point conversion. See, so here's the beautiful If the narrative holds, average three or four yards on this one. If the narrative holds, Tim, the mean is three, seven, three. They can run this clock out. Yeah, absolutely. Remember, Texas has used timeouts. I mean, you're looking at the time of possession on the average they drives. One, only one left, Spencer. They can yep. only stop the clock, their defense, one more time. I'm, I'm making the point, Tim, because you got to go back and – as, as we look at Chris Edge, you got to go back and look at David Yost. Look at his strategy for coming out and managing this second half the way he is. Content with strategic play selection against the type of coverage that he wants, not in a hurry. And he showed great poise in the second half. That play clock going all the way down to one before he snaps it. So Robert. Look at him go. Wow. Look at him go. He breaks contained. Sir Roderick, just call me sir.
Oh, when you have a playmaker, Spencer T. And this kid is that. Timmy, I love it when you have guys like Weston White, the left guard, and Ethan Card, the tackle. When you see them sitting back on those hills, you know they're trying to get out there and get in front of him. They've got something special on. These splits that the Texas Tech Red Raiders get are huge just by design. Yeah, but it's beautiful to watch. They are waking up the echoes here. You know, he's the first in a long while as a Red Raider to lead his team in rushing as a freshman, joining Byron Bam Morris in 91 and Ricky Williams in 97. Spencer, once he gets past the second level, see ya. I mean, listen, he spun around in there, Timmy, and he had as many as three defenders trying to stop him. I mean, not wrapping up against this guy is a huge mistake. He is, he's something special, man. Doesn't give you a whole part of his body to grab, protects the ball in traffic, spinning. I mean, he's just elusive. Look at his eyes flashing inside. It's periphery vision, understanding where the defenders are. Understand where the threat comes from the left side, protecting the ball in his left hand. I mean, this, this is an end-to-end -end running solution right here. Patrick Mahomes is digging this. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Patrick, on your new deal and a Super Bowl. And we can all say, Spencer, you and I can say we knew you win. Absolutely. They're wearing these uniforms. These are throwbacks to the old Spike Dykes era. I started to call Bowman Billy Joe Tolliver at one point <laughs> yeah. today, my neighbor in Shreveport. Yeah, so happy for Mahomes, though. I mean, he's got good people surround him. Lee Steinberg and company, just the, the best it gets, man. So uh, this kid, congratulations to him. This kid, Bowman, if he can stay healthy, Spencer, uh, we're talking next level talent, too. We really are. Yeah, he, he is. And, and the only thing he's needed to do was to stay healthy. Again, in his first opportunity to play Texas, I mean, this guy has a chance to do something that very few people can, and that's to leave with the victory against the Texas Here, Longhorns. Here's another takeaway from this week four so far. And again, all the precincts aren't reporting. We got football coming up tonight. They go with a little uh, sky kick this time. And it's a fair catch call by Jared Wiley. LSU's in trouble right now to Mississippi State at home, down three late in that game. We've already seen Oklahoma, the nation's number three team coming in losing here on our air on Fox earlier today after the big noon kickoff. Spencer, I think in the power conferences, because you're playing now, no cupcakes. Okay, the one game that you had in the Big 12 against a non-conference opponent, it's over. Yeah. I think we're looking at a league and many of these leagues, all right, where the champion will come away with two losses this year. I agree with you, but and there are some outliers to look at that are resurgent, like Miami. Manny Diaz and those guys have got some really cool things happening down south, and so you see, just as some of these juggernauts starting to fade, yep. some of the old ones are starting to reassert themselves. Oh, over the middle, Schooler, he reeled that one in. Beautiful catch. A little veteran savvy and trust that time from Ellinger, finding Schooler. He's only been practicing for a couple of weeks with Ellinger. That's why I questioned that, that little sky kick just a minute ago. You want to make them work for every bit of it. First and 10, Sam looking. Incomplete. He was going towards Schooler again. He's a little winded. Will take himself out of the fray for the moment. But he's been targeted a great deal today. Says a lot about the young man. And as I said earlier, not having Jake Smith and Jordan Whittington, Spencer, that I think has been a factor for Ellinger today. No question about it. You get comfortable with guys and you're, you're familiar with the way they read coverage and the routes that they run. You have preferred routes, even though you don't talk about it a lot, so as to not compromise what you're doing. Second and ten. Ellinger, crossing pattern, caught by money. Shy of the ten, down at the twelve. This is where that three-man rotation that has been a thorn in the side of Ellinger, not a factor on that play. That's a long, developing, deep crossing route that Ellinger had plenty of time. Rusher again in the end zone, caught, wow. touchdown, Brennan Eagles. Well, that was a perfectly thrown ball and an excellent route run. Doesn't get any better than that in the back of the end zone. You can see Eagles, he's coming off off coverage again. Adrian does a nice job of settling. Adrian Fry is there, but he beats him to that back end. That's a laser. That's a dart. For all the inefficiency or the lack of accuracy that we've seen from time to time in critical plays, a couple of touchdown potentials for Ellinger, he was on the spot with that one. Well, the issue for Texas is they can only stop the clock one time. Yep. They're going to have to have 
on onside recovery here. Hicker with the extra point. So Spencer T, execution here of the onsides. And we've seen a lot of adventures both at the pro level and the college level. What do you think here? Well, you know, I'm an old special teams guy, and I like to see special teams execute. So we've seen Texas Tech, quite frankly, do that better than Texas. And we've seen Texas Tech's receivers step up and make huge plays. To me, I think it comes down to Bobin. We said before that he needs to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sam Ellinger, and I think he's done that today well. Texas uh, exhausted some of their timeouts defensively. They'd love to have them back. But with... With a recovery, they would be in good position. Without a recovery, chances are, if you do the math, they're in a world of hurt. He's just done a fantastic job, has Alan Bowman. Again, just, I don't know, being mindful, number one, showing patience, understanding what David wants to accomplish as offensive coordinator, and having faith and confidence in one another. Cameron Dicker setting it up, looking for that high third bounce. Boom, there it is, it's oh, loose, it. and it's picked up by Texas. Inside the 40 at the 37, Malcolm Epps is on top of it. Well, we, we said it would be first one to 50, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Here's the oblong bouncing ball. I'm telling you, when it, that second hop is the one that does it. Yep. The ricochet, man. And then you got to be able to go up and climb the ladder and get that one and pull it down. Yeah, that was uh, McPherson, number eight, that could not bring it in. And they got the high hop that they wanted. McPherson just could not bring that one in. You got one of your starters on special teams. They call them the hands team for a reason. And that's the best you got, you know. And we just got to saying how important special teams are, man. It's such a flashpoint. Well, clean rivalries. You're Sam Ellinger, and you're looking to have your name etched in there with uh, the likes of Young. This, and this will do it. This Cole is the kind McCoy. of way to do it. Yeah. If you you need to win games like this on the road, you need to have championships by your name. From the 42 first down, Sam with plenty of time. Flush from the pocket. A scurry towards the sideline, a shoestring tackle by Merriweather. Christian Merriweather with great sideline to sideline speed. Well, it still technically was a win for Texas Tech because they flushed Ellinger and made him run and work for that with a three man rush. So that's it. Stayed in bounds, second down and seven. Three man rush. Checks off and goes underneath to Ingram and Keontae. Down to the 25-yard line. Clock continues to tick. Stops after the completion as they set the chains on first down. One timeout remaining for the Horns. Sam with plenty of time. Underneath again to Ingram. Spun down at the 25. Don't give him those little dinks and dunks, man. He can be, you begin to worry about the fatigue factor defensively. Colin Schooler well, they're not made getting that any, stop. Yeah, they're not getting any pressure on him whatsoever. No, but no. That, but that's really the, not the concern to him. If they've got eight on the back end, they just want to keep everything in front of them, keep the ball in play. Texas looking to hold on to their command here in Lubbock. Haven't lost here since 08. And Ellinger spun down from behind by Devin Drew, number 90. Clock continues to tick. As we said, only one timeout remaining. Flag down on what would be a third and one play. Did they get a timeout? Yeah, Texas Tech got lucky there. Yeah, they, they, they did. Timeout, Texas Tech. For those of you just joining us, here in the fourth quarter, it has been wild. Ellinger. A perfectly thrown ball, Spencer. It was in the back of the end zone. Again, Eagles did a fantastic job of working that back end zone. And then, of course, on the, the onside kick on the other side. This was hot. The oblong bounce. You got your best hands guys out there, and you can't bring it down. Special teams deciding oh. the outcome of this one, Timmy. Historic 70th meeting. 104 points combined. 
That's the most in history. Two onside kick recoveries, two blocked punts for touchdowns, <laughs> one for each team, and 56 points for the Red Raiders, most ever, and it still may not be enough here at home. Well, that's a lot of football, man, right there. A lot of football. So I'll keep Patterson out there with his guys. Third down, a yard to go. Ellinger's going to have to manage the clock some now. Mm -hmm. He does have the one timeout remaining. Pulls it down, carries it himself. Inside the 10 and down at the 7. Jeffers with the tackle. First and goal. It'll take a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Ellinger for Schooler. He's got it, but out of bounds at the five. Penalty, ten flags down. Yep. Boy, if this is holding, that would really hurt. Thrown in an area where you might expect that to be the call. No preliminary indication as yet. Well, it was in the interior line yep. where I saw it, so... Eligible man downfield, uh -oh. 78. One of those. Five-yard penalty. He was looking for that uh, convoy to get out there and try to block in front of Schooler once he made the catch. Uh, he's, he started in the before. interior line. Yeah. <laughs> he found his way down line. Well, that backs them up to the 13-yard line. Watch Okafor's release here, Spencer. Yeah, number seven, and he slams and helps his center and then pushes out gets yeah. too far upfield. Had no impact on the play whatsoever. Right. Texas Tech believes they got a false start from Angelau, 75. I believe they did. Snap infraction, 68. Offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Actually, Herkstetter rather than Angelau. Tim, in a regular season, everybody had a mulligan. Even if you were the, the first to play, you wonder, is it enough? Texas yeah. needs this one. First and goal. All the way back now to the 18-yard line. Opens up the playbook here for Sam. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Over the middle, it's caught. Wow. Touchdown, Joshua Moore. Just as I thought, you know, this opens up the playbook. <laughs> Another hello, how do you do? Man. Josh Moore working outside, the furthest of the three, two receivers. Again, it's a switch route. He comes underneath and then sees the inside defender and gets vertical. Turns it into kind of like a quasi-skinny post. And that vertical stretch is what allowed Ellinger to sit down and put it on a rope. He's done that twice in the last three drives, scoring and ending in points. Well, the two-point conversion means everything. Mm. Could we have an extra session in our first Big 12 matchup of the year? Here on Fox after an unbelievable <laughs> upset to open. Kansas State does it to Oklahoma for a second consecutive year, this time in Norman. Minus seven key players. Texas now with its final timeout. And look at this. Uh, this was a shootout for Florida. They did win at Ole Miss. Uh, the lane train's first game, but they get the victory. Trailing now 44-34 LSU in all kinds of trouble, the defending national champions. Swing the sword yet again, right? Mike wow, Leach in his first opportunity in Baton Rouge, and of course that win we touched on for Kansas State against Oklahoma. Wherever he goes, Mike Leach just wins, man. Yeah. It's tough to defend that. They, they know about that here. Concept. They know about that here in Lubbock. Well, you waited for the timeout, and this is your one play to stay undefeated. But if we've learned anything today, Spencer, uh -huh. it's it's that in this uh, unusual season where you know you have to live day by day. If you if you think more than a week in advance, you're wasting your brain cells. Mm. You've got to be at your best when the light is shining, and that means Sam Ellinger at this very moment. So much of his future, so much of. The plans of Texas football rest with number 11 right here. You're so right about this. Success is about thriving in chaos. And in this COVID year, that certainly applies. Trips right. Timmy, you got three, three, four defenders to, to defend three. Look at the off coverage. 
Ellinger, it's yeah, caught. Wow. The two-point conversion. Brennan Eagles, we're tied at 56. How about that formation? He goes the opposite direction of the loaded teacup. You talked about it. Four wide receivers set to the top. Well, it's to create the isolation and the advantage that you want. And that's Jamarcus Ingram in the back. And they like that to exploit that. You got a tall guy. Even though Ingram's got a six foot two reach and arm length themselves, they like Eagle, the matchup. And he went up and soared high and caught that one big time. That was impressive. Love the formation. Draw all the attention away and say, hey, this is mano a mano. Go beat their guy. Wow. <laughs> Man. Well. Talk about high drama. Well, you think about that Sir Dodrick run. They gave them that 15-point lead. You're thinking Sir Roderick just put this baby away. Uh, well, guess what? Sam had other ideas. You had to execute the onsides perfectly. Texas did. And now we are staring right in the middle of a Big 12 overtime tilt here in Lubbock, Texas. But, hey, with 40 seconds left and this Texas Tech offense, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking that they're just going to sit on it and wait for overtime here if they get good field position. They do have one timeout left, Texas Tech, in regulation. And Bowman waits his turn. So they'll start with 40 seconds remaining. Sir Roderick Thompson. Anything you can do, I can do better. He started it off. Snodrick, like a whirling dervish inside, bounced off people, protecting the football and headed to the end zone, Timmy. And they said, hey, if you can do it, let me come back to the Eagle and see him fly and go make a score. <laughs> Outstanding. Then the kick. High. Can't handle it. It's hot. Texas Johnny on the spot. They fielded and set it up for Ellinger again on the skinny post route. A skinny post at least to another score. And then finally, Eagle flies again. Joshua Moore and Eagles. The two-point conversion ties this baby up. Eagles on three occasions making plays and Joshua Moore as well. First down. This pass almost picked off, and that was a mix-up between Basher and the quarterback Bowman. It'll be second and ten. 313 was left in the game. Texas Tech was up 56 to 41. And now 15 unanswered for Hookham. Well, the good thing about a game like this in a year that is so atypical, it builds character big time. Second down and 10. Texas brings four. There's the quick curl to Ezekama. He has a touchdown catch already today. Moves the chains out to the 38-yard line. Clock stops after the first down. They'd like to get in field goal position here before the overtime. Taking the shot. He got Fasher, it, Tim. He's, got he's it. wide open. Nice. Right oh. on the sideline, they're going to rule him out. They're going to rule him out. Maybe a little less un air underneath this. He stays in bounds, but it was a great effort. It drifted him, caused his Vasher to step outside, but Timmy. Yeah, I think he stepped out. Yeah. The left foot was out barely before he brought it in. I believe right there he was out of bounds. I don't think he had, had it caught. And, and he didn't have it. Yeah. yeah. He didn't have the ball seated at that point. Yeah. yeah had no Good call. Yeah, it was a great call. But look out. <laughs> Second and 10. <laughs> Well, that, that'll loosen you up, though. That, if you had intent of blitzing, that'll back you up a little bit. There's a Keyshawn Carter's turn. Over the middle, that one's caught. Got a six-yard gain to Koontz. The now they're going to say incomplete. Ball fell incomplete. Actually, maybe a break for Texas Tech as the clock would have continued to tick. Third down and 10. You take another shot uh, here, Absolutely. Spence? You take another shot. This is four-down territory, Tim. I mean, look. Yep. Bottom line, you got 15 seconds left. Third down. If you come up short, you hurry, take another shot. Give Vasher a chance. And if he can make the grab, you hope near the sidelines, they'll have a chance to get a field goal opportunity. Over the middle, it's caught but thrown behind the receiver. Rigdon 
Time is going to wind out. Tech calls its timeout with fourth down. And you know what? Uh, they had that one timeout left to take. I'm sure they were hoping to get close to uh, a possible field goal opportunity. But as it stands right now, you've got one chance to throw a Hail well, Mary. I would have let more time run off the clock. I'd have got it down to three seconds. I mean, mm -hmm. it may not seem like it's a big deal, but it is a big deal because if you take a shot and you leave any time on, yeah. you're going to give them at least one Hail Mary opportunity. They may not take it, but. Given the circumstances with the punt game today, Spencer, that may be a more precarious yeah. play at well, this stage. Given where they are in the field position. Yeah, absolutely. If anything, probably the better choice would be to have Bowman roll out, use as much clock as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And then put the ball in the air deep. But it would appear, based on what we're seeing, that he's done and is going to remain on the sideline. So I think they may be punting this thing away. I don't know about that. I mean, I what it looks like in a game when you scored over 100 points i think you'd be trying to score anytime you touch it yep they are going to try to boot it too much time on fourth down and as a result they're going to mm -hmm. punt the ball I, I think you're right if they had taken the timeout later they could have uh, heaved one but now the, that's just too much time to give up that kind of field position if the play is in under nine seconds. So all the pressure here on McNamara to get rid of it. Texas had no one back there. They're just gonna let it roll free. And we are headed to overtime, my friend. <laughs> I'm glad I drove to Lubbock. I don't have to worry about catching any catching flights. flights. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Terry's waiting for me at the hotel, and she'll have to wait a little longer. She just called. She says she's gone already. <laughs> <laughs> we got to overtime with this two-point conversion. Brennan Eagles, who have made three critical catches in the final drive. Moore had a touchdown, Eagles with the two-pointer, tied at 56. Spencer Tillman and I have been at this for a long time. This is our 22nd yes. year of the last 23 we've been together. We've never had a game like this. Yeah. Nothing like this. 15 points scored in the last 340 by Texas to send it to overtime. And as we await uh, the toss to see who gets possession first and where we'll set up for overtime, Spencer, I, I have to ask you the momentum here. For Texas, it's got to be with them, right? I mean, absolutely got to be. This is like a steal for them. Yeah, being able to execute again on those two-point conversions really was key. And Eagles, as you point out, Brennan was the key to that. Yeah. Getting in the back of the end zone and proving in real time that he's the guy that Ellinger needs to go to. And so as they sort this out right now, you got to consider Texas has got the advantage in terms of momentum. And 12 logos, heads, tails, heads, tails. The winner of the toss will choose offense defense or which end of the field we're going to play on. Each team gets one timeout per overtime period that do not carry over. What's your call? Tails is the call. It is heads. Defer? You want to go on defense? All right. You guys want to attack that side? All right. Spin it around, gentlemen. Mm. Texas Tech, when the toss will go on defense, Texas will go this end, first down. The book will tell you, Spencer, that you want to know how many points you need to score when you get the ball in the first overtime. But as you look at the numbers, the game summary here, given how long Texas Tech's defense has been on the field, you know, I don't know if I wouldn't have thought about taking the ball first. Yeah, when I heard him say defer, I, I questioned that. And in a typical game that's not as high scoring as this and guys aren't as winded, I think that strategy does work, Tim, but this is an atypical performance. And you can see the count, and it's not just a Bowman, but his counterpart, Ellinger, very confident on the sideline, ready to leverage that kind of pride. It's not excessive, but it's it's a good kind of pride that he's showing right now. And it's confidence. It's warranted. Eagles has done a fantastic job of getting them back in this game. It's been outstanding. Well, the defending national champions have lost their home opener. First time that has happened mm. to a national champion at home uh, since, uh, gosh, I think we're talking duel in the desert way back in the day. Uh, Oklahoma has lost today, the number three team in the country on our air. And now, maybe the longest game that we've had in Big 12 history on Fox. Keontae Ingram is in the backfield. They go with Schooler on the quick hitch after the play fake. Oh, Schooler delivering a blow. Yeah, how about, how about that? that? Yeah, Adrian Fry on the 
receiving in, but just a negligible gain on the play. Rob trying to get into it, and this is the side of the field where more of the Texas Tech congregation would be located. 16,600 on hand today. Keith Patterson staying with his three-man rush, and it's a run. Ingram pops it. Breaks free and down near the 10. Colin Schooler with the saving tackle number 17. On run plays are natural soft spots in a 3-4 front or three-man fronts. Got a down man down for, is it Merriweather? Yeah, it's Merriweather. Merriweather. Rashawn Merriweather, number one. And again, I, I go back to this, Spencer. They had to be tired. That defense was on the field so long in the last three and a half minutes of the regulation period. I'm not surprised at all that some of these guys are winded. That's a great point that you make. I think one thing that they did do to kind of dampen that was to control the ball in the third quarter when yes. they totally flipped the script so the defense was able to get a breather. But as you said, in that fourth frame, all of a sudden Sam got hot. Yeah, he's just cramped up. It's clear. Yeah. He's a thick dude, too. Yeah, he's he a is. big, muscular guy, and they're spending a lot. This is 100 degrees out here. Today. They're spending a lot of fluids. Well, the sun has gotten to a point where at least uh, we have shade across the entire football field for the first time. It came on the air, it was 93 degrees. It did get up to 100 in the latter stages of the third quarter. Let's see what my chart says here, Tim. They like a solo formation. Uh, you can run slant here with that safety at least four yards in. The wide receiver, you got a chance. Schooler in motion. There you got it. You got it. There's the slant. <laughs> Caught touchdown. Spencer T all over it. Joshua Moore. Timmy, this is like stealing. This is the matchup that they've been looking for. My, my chart says, hey, when you get a wide guy like this and you got the safety two yards or more inside the hash, you got to go for it because this is essentially a bail technique inviting the guy yeah. to come inside. And all he has to do is make sure he stays skinny or vertical because you start drifting, all of a sudden that safety can cover you. Outstanding play call. Better recognition by Ellinger to make it happen. That's outstanding football right there now. Cameron Dicker for the extra point. Always nice to know you've got a field goal kicker that's almost automatic, and Dicker is in overtime. So 63-56, it'll be Texas Tech's turn, and whatever you've got in your playbook for Alan Bowman, David Yost, it's time to dial it up. Well, Yost has done a fantastic job of responding in kind, and uh, he's done it different ways. That's the exciting thing about it. When he's had to go tempo, he did it. When he slowed it down, very effective. Spencer, I want to say it might have been uh, two years ago when Texas Tech, or maybe three, it was recently Oklahoma was in here and they just played all night long. It didn't oh, go yeah. to overtime, yeah. but Oklahoma was able to squeeze out a victory. Texas Tech has had a propensity for losing a lot of close games. I mean, a lot of close games throughout the years. This would be a devastating defeat, given the fact that they were up 15 with 3.41 left in the game. They got the ball now with Sir Roderick Thompson in the backfield, and he is snuffed out way back at the 29. That's Taquan Graham, 49, making the tackle. And you talk about technique. We talked earlier about how Taquan Graham is a student of the game. He played that play with excellent leverage and then aggressiveness. He looks like it's the first quarter for him. I mean, that quickness off the ball was outstanding. He, he wants to play at the next level, but he wants to be a tactician about it. Second down and 14. Not an advantageous position to be in. Bowman underneath incomplete. Outstanding defensive work by Overshone. And Marvin all over that play. They were going for Kuntz underneath the tight end. Third down and 14. So now you got to get a first down. The line to make the 15 yard line of the Longhorns. Showing a little frustration there. Bowman wants those guys to get down so he can take a look at what he's looking at from a coverage standpoint. A single high safety. Drifting back to it late. Cover two. There should be something in the lane. Tight end. Underneath, Sir Roderick. Nothing there. It's on the ground. Texas recovers. Wow. Ball game. game over. Horns win it. Osai wraps it up and will deliver it to Austin. One of the great comebacks in Texas football history. 
63 to 56. Improbable, but not impossible. No one feels worse than Sir Roderick Thompson. They are going to review it. So maybe the celebration a little premature, but Osai was right there watching as he strips it away. This is uh, the defender, Jawan Mitchell, but Sir Robert just lost the football. Yeah, he had it on his helmet, yep. and the ball was hot and high a little bit. But you know what? That's where you got to show your poise. Yep. If you snag that ball out of the air instead of letting it climb on top of you, it's just about reaching. But, you know, a lot of times running backs are not in the situation where they're catching balls like that, Timmy. Was, That's frustrating. Uh, Joseph Osai fell on top of it, and Texas will get out of here, and I do mean get out of here, with a narrow escape victory. One that Tom Herman and his quarterback, Sam Ellinger will think about for a long, long time. He's just trying to make a play and lost the handle. Yep, lost the handle on it, was high on his helmet. It's unfortunate because he's made such a significant impact in this game. He's going to be good for them in the future. Credit again, Jawan Mitchell, for being there and forcing him to try to make a play that he could not make. And then Osai recovers it and pulls it out of there. As they review it, we'll go back to Dean Blandino to put an exclamation point on it for us. Yeah, I don't know if we've got an exclamation point yet because what they're looking at, and you've got to look at this in real time, does he ever put that football away? Ah, okay. Does he ever control it, get a body part down, and have it long enough to do something with it? Right. To me, he never nope. tucks that ball away. That's a it's good moving call. the entire time. I think this is incomplete. We're gonna we're gonna have a fourth down here. Ooh. I, Dean, I think you're absolutely yeah. right. Because yeah. you know, when you when you're watching a guy that's athletic like that, you're watching his legs and watching everything that's moving. Yeah. But he never seated that ball. In real time, he never Spencer, had control. In real time, I thought the ball had been knocked away by Mitchell. I thought six. In real time, right? As I was calling it, I thought the ball had been jarred loose. It had not. And in fact. He was, his eyes were up. He was looking to make a play, and he never had control. I think that's an excellent call by uh, Dean. He, Dean is right on. And exactly why we have he and Mike Pereira back in our studio. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty, but one of the reasons why, because of Texas' momentum in the extra session, I wanted to go and possess the ball yeah. in overtime. Yeah. Yeah, you, you didn't like that decision. No, didn't like it at all. Although the book says play defense first. Sometimes you got to go against the book. Your, your defense was really tired. Mm -hmm. But you got a chance now for Vasher or Ezekuma to possibly make yeah. a play. Here comes the call. After review, it's an incomplete pass. It's going to be fourth down at the 29-yard line. Fourth and 14 at the 29-yard so, line. So hold and everything. That's right. <laughs> a little high drama on the planes. And again, with the ball just inside the 30, I mean... Who knows what can happen? Absolutely. Man, you, you got three playmakers down at the bottom of your screen here. Move him out of the pocket, flood the field to your left, and let's see if he can come up with something. There's a comma, Basher, all playmakers. Bowman with time. Now he's one that running out, flushed. Let's it fly, and this one's picked off by Caden Stearns, and that. We'll put it away. Woo. Texas with a remarkable come from behind win. Down 15 with 341 left. Excellent use of an onside kick. And what might have been turns into what? Here in Lubbock. No lead is safe, Tim. <laughs> it's a game of ebb and flow, and we just watched another gym. Wow. Sam Ellinger answered the bell, did he not? Yet again. He had been thoroughly outplayed in the third quarter and early fourth by Bowman. Tim, I thought, I thought they should have come out here naked and flooded instead of having to wait and let the pressure flush him out of the pocket. He should have been sprinting to that area yep. and then probably drawn a penalty or something to that effect. And that would have been their best chance, trying to set up and throw and then being forced out of the pocket by that four-man rush, I think was probably not the best choice. But outstanding job otherwise. And um, I'm sure Zach McPherson, who was on that onside play, the ball tipped off his hands. He'll remember that for a long time. 
For Spencer Tillman, our entire Fox Sports crew, Tim Brando, thanking you for watching college football on Fox. Coming up after this short break, we'll take you to Major League Baseball coverage. What a day, huh? On Fox.